in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Poverty and the negative effects that come with them. Open bracket. Let's list out some of the negative effects. Number one, fear. Number two, insecurity. Number three, greed. Number four, self-centeredness. Number five, unrighteousness. And the list goes on and on and on. So prosperity means financial prosperity now talks about freedom total freedom from poverty from lack insufficiency and the negative effects i tell you there are negative effects that poverty can bring to the life of a man hallelujah i'll give you another definition financial prosperity also means having abundant financial supplies having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish multiply and sustain its availability having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish multiply and sustain its availability to have financial supplies is not enough there must be in you the ability to replenish to multiply and to sustain that supply at that point you are financially prosperous hallelujah are we blessed number two let's define poverty these are the two major words that were dealing with one is our friend the other is our enemy so let's define both of them what is poverty poverty is a perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources poverty is the perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources often characterized by lack of productivity a perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources often characterized by lack of productivity if you have that down say amen it's important for us to understand exactly what we are talking about so that we are not lost in assumption as to what exactly we are talking about. It is the will of God for every single one of us seated here to come to a point in our lives where we have abundance of financial supplies alongside the capacity to replenish, to multiply, and to sustain its availability. Hallelujah. Now, the church, let me start by saying this. The church has largely or greatly suffered from what I call the incomplete teaching on wealth and prosperity. One of the biggest tragedies of the church today, financially speaking, is that most preachers do not have financial literacy. And I told you the church is an institution. An institution is any platform 
that permits the transference of knowledge. Institution is necessary for development, for productivity in any society. There are governmental institutions. There are security institutions. Right? And so on and so forth. The church as an assembly, the gathering, the congregation of people is also an institution. Both a spiritual institution and an institution in terms of education and impartation of knowledge. So most of the mindset that people have had about finances, especially in the continent of Africa and Nigeria, has come directly from men of God. Because most people do not read books, they don't attend seminars, they have no passion and appetite for knowledge in terms of financial intelligence. So their principal channel of communication Aside from education that gives them degrees and certificates. You are only in school for five years. But you are in the church for the rest of your life. Is that true? And so the church is a stronger institution that communicates knowledge. So the, the, the lack of financial knowledge and intelligence and literacy that we have. Is a direct reflection of the men of God that are upon our pulpits. Many men of God are anointed. Many men of God are sincere. Many men of God are genuine. They love God with all their heart. Many men of God are rich. They are wealthy. But very few have financial literacy. Is God helping us? And that lack of financial literacy has created all kinds of lopsided teachings about prosperity. So, Different men of God have their views, which is a product of their experiences. How they became blessed is how they will teach you. Is that not true? And many of the ways that, they, that the men of God are blessed by can only bless a man if he is a preacher. If you are not a preacher, you cannot be blessed by the methods they teach. And we'll see that in the course of the series. Are we getting blessed? And so we have a congregation that is largely aware of just one side of the requirements for true and lasting financial prosperity. Men of God have written all kinds of books about their perspectives and we must take our time to appreciate the contributions that they have made. It is only what you have that you can give. Is that not true? But then the Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. In other words, if I love my sheep so much or God's sheep has committed to me, I must go out of my way for their sake beyond my experience to find out what is really required for them to prosper. It's called passion. It's called the heart of a pastor, the heart of a shepherd. It is selfish and self-centered when a man of God comes around his perspective about wealth and advocates that perspective alone to people and the result of that lopsided teaching is that only one person is getting blessed the person who is doing the teaching and those who are passionately receiving and swallowing up everything he's advocating hook line and sinker find out that they are doing their very best but they don't seem to connect to this key and tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ I trust that God will bring a perspective for us that can make every one of us seated here who is truly interested to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. The result of the lopsided financial teachings that have come in the church, the result is lost. Greed. Impatience materialism and carnality you see that this is the result the resultant effect of the lopsided teachings we have brought to the body of christ about prosperity is what has produced lost in people and so you have a congregation that is so passionate about money everything about their lives is money if it's not money if you cannot show me the financial component of what you are doing i'm not interested so we have a church that is hungry and desperate for money anyhow. Whether by stealing, whether by
defrauding people no matter what it is they want to be passionate because of the nature and the type of the teaching hallelujah we have taught people that they are not blessed because they do not have faith we have taught all kinds of imbalanced teachings that have come popular but many of them do not hold water listen let me tell you something if you listen to what i'm teaching you tonight i give you a guarantee you will be blessed it's a guarantee hallelujah we see a lot of impatience for instance there are many young people in many churches who will see a jeep parked outside and immediately after the service will go and snap it lay hands on it claim it and do all of that how many young people in churches are looting cheating people saving money just to buy a jeep to prove that this prosperity thing is working to prove that they are carrying a prosperity anointing. Is that true? A young man who earns just 50,000. You see him living in a house of 750,000 because of the pressure. As advocated by his man of God. To prove that the word is working. Is that true? Impatience. Many people have compromised on the law of process. Because of the teachings. The men of God come and advocate a sharp, sharp prosperity message. Right? A message that if you can connect to immediately, tomorrow your life can change. And there will be testimonies of people that have received that kind of result. And everybody is passionate and they have no appetite for true knowledge. They do not have the staying power and the discipline to learn the principles and the protocol to the wealthy place. And so that lust is there. Everybody's moving around. Oh God, I will serve you. So that somebody from nowhere will just bless me and change my story. It has been the basis for our many unscriptural prayers. Hallelujah. Statistically speaking, um, I wanted to play a little documentary for us, but I thought it would waste time. So maybe next week if we have time. Hallelujah. Wow, there's a lot going on here. Can you help me, guys? Can we push this a little back? So that it can save me a lot of stress from this. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Did you know that statistically speaking, about 20% of the wealthiest people in the world control 80% of the entire wealth in the world. In fact, just seven, seven of the world's wealthiest people have the wealth that is equivalent to two-third. Two-third of the entire world's wealth is controlled by seven people. Why is this so? Hallelujah. In Nigeria, for instance, there are many people who cannot live off, statistically speaking, one dollar. That's the poverty bench. That means there are people who cannot afford 150 to 200 naira per day to live on. Many of these people go to churches every Sunday, true or false. Many of these people are taught by preachers that our God is a loving God. Since I was born, how is it? Now I am older. Brother, have you seen? You have seen it. Keep quiet. You have seen it. I'm not insulting the song. I'm just showing us the part of the song where we are telling lies. And many people dance and sweat their lives out and go back to the secret place and say, God, what is wrong? Who is lying here? You or my pastor or me? There is a lie somewhere in this equation. Somebody is not telling the truth. Hallelujah. How many angry church members do we have in Nigeria who have done everything they have been told to do over decades and nothing has happened? And the best spiritual explanation to
to save both the man of God and his integrity is the victim does not have faith. Praise the Lord. Is that really it? Is that re How could God who delights in the prosperity of his servant make the subject of wealth and prosperity so mystical? Does that look like the God you serve? Hallelujah. The subject of wealth and prosperity, the, the mysticism around it is so much that every time you mention it, all that comes to people's mind is the pain of their past or their current situation. There's nothing joyful they think about money. You mention money or anything that looks like wealth and prosperity and you see this air of anger and pain that comes as a result of frustration. So people just prefer to let it lie low there. Or come to church and we keep telling our lies as usual. When the Lord brings a word like this, the Bible says he sent a word to Jacob, but it lighted upon Israel. When the Lord brings a word like this to you, it's because of what you represent. Is because of many in your house that are waiting passionately and desperately. Poverty has done more harm, brothers and sisters, more than we can ever imagine. Our ladies have gotten into prostitution because of poverty. Many people have married the wrong men because of poverty. Your mother has given you a direct, unambiguous warning about bringing a prosperous man as a succor to their decades of untold hardship. So you, are, you represent the investment of the family. They have warned you. They started doing it indirectly. But now that you are of age, they are very direct about it. So every time a brother approaches you, you look at him in the lens of the warning you receive. And say, brother, no. It's not like you are not born again, but you don't represent the hunger of my family. Is that true? How many young men in Nigeria, do you know I, I, I like looking at statistics a lot because I like working based on facts. Are you aware, oh graduate or prospective graduate, that only one out of every ten or more now graduates ever find any decent and meaningful job within the first five years of their graduation? In Nigeria, not America. That means it's one thing to go to school. Pay the price. This is what you would have really worked on. It will affect the camera. It's better for us to have peace. Please. Please, please, please. It's their time. They are part of the meeting. And there's nothing we can do. There is no system of driving them aside from offering this. So I will appreciate it if you can... Just do something about it. It will affect your coverage. Please snap, snap. Ah, okay. I see. Maybe next week I'll stand outside. That's just the safest point. Praise God. Okay, let's continue. There's no sacrifice that is too great. Not this. This is, this is what many homes have as default. So there's nothing to run around. I mean, this is what floats around many poor homes. Is that not true? Not your home. I mean many poor homes. <sighs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So many graduates finish from Nigeria and when they come out of the university, they are happy. They serve and then they go to Uncle A or B. And say, Uncle, I'm now a graduate. And he says, so what about it? And then they are shocked. Right? And at first, they still believe the world is working. I'm forcing it to work. One year, nothing works. Two years, nothing works. Three years, nothing works. And then it downs on them that that thing I've been hearing is real. Praise the Lord. So what exactly is the problem? The first topic we'll be considering tonight is why are so many people poor don't worry don't worry there's nothing we can do about it we'll just manage but i really believe something can be done why is this why are they here why not there
Praise the Lord. Why are there so many poor people? Is it a cause? Is it, is it something that should be? Did God design it that way? If no, what is wrong? I want to give you a few reasons. All of them, all of the reasons I'm about to give you will surprise you. Some of them are deceptfully simple that you may tend to ignore it. But please, I want you to write it and just let me talk to you. Are we blessed? Are we following, please? Number one. Why are so many people poor? Number one. Ready for this? They are poor because they have not decided to be wealthy. Many people are poor and will remain poor. Please underline the word decided because they have not decided to be wealthy. Now this will shock you. Just hang on until I explain it. Many well-meaning people in Nigeria are poor. And some of us seated right here have been extreme victims of poverty and lack and insufficiency because we have not decided to be wealthy. Number two, why are so many people poor? In fact, you can even put in bracket why are so many Christians poor? Because it's, it's understandable if, if people are generally poor, there are demons around, there are all kinds of things around, but why are Christians, tongue-talking Christians, tight paying Christians, faithful Christians, why are we poor? Number two, many are poor because they do not have a goal to be wealthy. Mm. They do not have a goal to be wealthy. Underline the word goal. Many are poor because they do not have a goal to be wealthy. Number three, why are so many people poor? Many are poor. This is a major reason now. Many are poor. You can bring that lady here. She can come and sit here, please. Those people who are having issues, you can come and sit here. There's, there's just endure people. There's, there's only so much we can do about it. Sorry about it. Number three, are you there? Lack of understanding the real formula for wealth and abundance. Right real formula for wealth and abundance in capital letter. The third reason why so many people are poor is because of the lack of of the understanding of the real formula they have all kinds of things they call formulas but the real formula for wealth and abundance lack of understanding of the real formula the biggest of all reasons why people are poor number four the biggest of them all is lack of the mental transition from the realm of poverty to wealth and abundance. Oh, listen to me. Listen to what I'm about to teach you, please. Lack of the mental transition, underline the word mental transition, from the realm of poverty to wealth. These are the four major reasons, brothers and sisters. Look up, please. These are the four major reasons why our parents, our loved ones, our churches, our preachers, myself, you, and all the people that have suffered poverty. This is the reason why many are poor today and why they will continue to be poor. They have not decided to be wealthy. They have not set it as a goal to be wealthy. They do not even understand that wealth has a formula. They surround the subject of wealth and prosperity with a lot of mysticism. And they hope that their spirituality will somehow find its way into making them blessed. No, sir. All of us today, 
in this place are dressed with clothes because there is a formula. Is that not true? There is a formula for wearing trousers. You don't carry a trouser and wear it from your head down. No. The design does not permit that. Is that true? Every gentleman here, every lady, everybody here on trousers knows that there is a formula for wearing trousers. Whether you have one hand or one leg is irrelevant. You just need to just tweak the formula a little but it is the same formula it will start down and you will put your feet and lift the trouser up the same way you you put on your shirt is that not true there is a formula for putting on watch nobody ties watch around his head out of confusion no except if it's just for all these carnivals and the rest that people do but no sane person in society would do that they use either their left or right hand but there is a way to go about it is that true are you getting me? There is a formula for picking and answering your call. Is that true? It doesn't matter what kind of phone. From 3310 to the one they made today. The formula is similar. Are you getting me now? There is a formula with which a woman uses to give birth to a child. Occasionally, she may have to go through CS. But there is a formula. There is a formula to which everyone eats. Food passes through the mouth. Is that true? Even if for any reason you have to use pipes because the person is, is sick and cannot swallow or something is wrong with the person, it is still just an adjustment to the same formula. Please, are we, are we getting what I'm saying? The reason why everybody wears clothes on earth is because there is a formula to do it and everyone knows it's simple enough. Are you getting me? By the time you put a lot of mysticism around clothes, Imagine someone coming in right now and he put his clothes and didn't know how to put it well. Right? Where the neck would be is where he put the hand and just patched it anyhow and said, nobody taught me. The reason why you are smart and decently seated is because subconsciously you have known the formula for dressing. If I ask you to walk now, everybody that has two legs and can walk, aside from people who are sick, walk with a formula. Is that not true? Pastor Femi, come. Which step did you take, left or right? Which was the first step? You do not even know. That's how much you have mastered the formula for walking. Are you getting me? I simply asked you to come and you didn't use your head to start coming. You know that you take on your... Are you getting me now? Walking is predictable because there is a formula. Is God speaking to us, please? Is God speaking to us? Bless you. Every time the law governing an operation is not known, mysticism, mysticism is the result. Whenever we do not understand a lot of things, we tie so much mysticism in it. There are so many people that tie a lot of mysticism to the operation of the anointing because either they do not operate like that or they just operate at a basic level. But the more you grow into the anointing, you know that as have hazard. As the operation of the spirit and the anointing is there are exact spiritual laws is that true so it is with wealth brothers and sisters please write it and style it there is a formula a formula that is beyond gender a formula that is beyond race a formula that is beyond background a formula that is beyond educational qualification if it is true that anything predictable in life is because it has a formula i announce to you that if you do not know the formula that governs wealth you will never be sustainably wealthy there's no point arguing it and then number four mental transition i'm just recapping on what i just said mental transition mental transition the next thing i want to talk about please write it down the myths and mindsets that keep people poor. Myths. M-Y-T-H-S. And the mindsets. There are ideologies. There are cliches. There are alibis. There are sayings that people have embraced, believed, that have kept them poor. 
they have kept territories poor they have kept churches poor they have kept businesses poor they have kept families poor and will continue to keep them poor i want to identify a few of them is god helping us tonight number one meet number one is that money and abundance is carnal evil or unnecessary the first myth and mindset that keeps people poor and will keep them poor forever and they support it with the scripture first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 media help us very fast let's see how far oh beautiful god bless you for this lovely work you're doing so that everybody can follow no matter what your brain capacity is this is simple enough for you to follow so we expect that we should ride at the same pace please praise the lord that money and abundance is carnal, evil, or necessary. Some of you seated here, inside and outside, looking at me. And many who are following us online and many who will be listening. That, that stumbling block is one of the things that has stopped us from even paying attention to the subject of wealth. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. It says, For the love of money, Huh? is the root of all evil it says for the love of money is what the root of all evil while which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows now many preachers have taken this scripture and twisted it and made it look like every time there is any desire in your heart to be blessed you are carnal you are fleshly you are of the devil the bible never said money is the root of all evil it said the love the word used there is the word eros i've taught us here right eros an ungodly affinity an attachment to money and finance that can lead you to losing your faith and you can pierce yourself with needless sorrows the bible never never ever never ever says money is evil or money is the root of evil the number one myth that has kept a lot of africans and well-meaning nigerians and well-meaning people you talk about money especially to those who are a bit elderly and hear their response about it no 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 no. take the world and give me jesus right and it's supposed to be a very innocent cliche but we need to observe what we are saying. Let me tell you. That conclusion was unconsciously drawn after repeated frustrations. Usually that's what happens. When you try and try and try and try and try and do all you know and nothing works. You safely create something that excuses you. Is that true? And oh what a joy when you find a scripture that can back up your frustration. That's what has happened to a lot of people. Some of us seated here right now. Myth number two. If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Myth number two. False beliefs that people have embraced that has kept them poor, kept churches poor, kept territories poor. And their supporting scripture is Psalms 84 verse 11. I'm showing you meat. We're examining meat, mindsets, ideologies that people have embraced that have given Satan access to whip them with poverty. If God wants me rich, he will make me rich. If I am not rich, it's because it's not the will of God. God did not plan for me to be rich. Many of our parents told us that. They whipped us as they said it. God doesn't want us rich us we are is no 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 this is the scripture for the lord god is a son and a shield the lord will give grace and glory no good thing with he withhold from them that walk uprightly and that means if i love god and i'm fasting i'm a member of koinonia prayer band i'm a member of the worship team right i serve god with all my heart and i do not see abundance based on this scripture as twisted by many preachers it convinces us that this is a sign from heaven 
that you and prosperity is not part of your your lot and you embrace it happily and satisfactorily most of the preachers that preach that thing you go to their board meetings and hear them argue about their salary you go to their board meetings and hear them argue about welfare right argue about so many things the man who is preaching that error has his car parked outside immediately after the service is walking happily there is chicken or turkey that has been prepared to him for him by his wife there is prophets offering or whatever waiting for him after the service and the helpless congregations who have swallowed that error like a drug will begin to see its reaction in their lives hallelujah is god helping us myth number three one of the most deceptive that tithing is the one and only key to abundance ah, yeah. this looks common many of us until now as i'm talking you have embraced it as your master key and only key to a world of financial abundance let me tell you there is no fallacy that is bigger than that this will shock many of you and I'm sure many people will now persecute me. That myth that tithing is the one and only key that is responsible for abundance in the life of a man. I am telling you this, hear me, is a deception from the pit of hell. That means when I come before God and I drop my tithe, I go back and I say, Lord, that is it. Where is the money? And we wait days turn to months months turn to years years tend to decades there are people that have been tithing faithfully for decades but it seems as though god has refused to open the heavens for them it is not the unfaithfulness of god it is our not understanding his ways at the end of this teaching you will get on your knees and worship god because you will see that he's truly a faithful god hallelujah and we support it with Malachi 3.10. Popular scripture. Right? Prove me now. Here we said the Lord. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing. The Bible never said if I will open heaven and pour you money. He said a blessing. Number one, you need to even know where the room is that the blessing is going to come. Because the Bible says that the blessing will come into a room. Where is it? The last time you checked your room, you didn't see anything there. That means you must understand God's language. Our lack of understanding has made us to embrace a lot of error. Number four. Another deceptive myth. As we are going, it gets more intense. Because this one I'm about to say affects so many of us here. Ready for it? Mm. Myth number four that keeps people poor and if they don't change will keep them poor forever if i can just have a business idea and start up capital i will be rich how deceptive many of you are shocked right now all i need to be rich give me capital give me a business idea and i will be rich how deceptive i assure you hear me i assure you if this was all there was to wealth, I give you a guarantee that over 70 to 80 percent of Nigerians would have been financially free today. Is that true? You meet an average young person, right? Come, Ken. Meet somebody and tell him, what do you think, what can I do to you? How can I contribute to your financial life? And hear what he will tell you. Please. There is this business idea in my head. That's what he's telling you now. Uh, the last time I went somewhere I saw pigs they were rearing pigs and they sold one in my presence they sold one 12,000 it's not hearsay I saw it are you getting what I'm saying now please sir give me 100,000 and I promise you I will never disturb you again 99.9% .9 of those people will return in frustration I tell you the truth hallelujah look I have tested this with people too many times it takes more than business and capital to be prosperous. Are you seeing where we are very deceptive now? It is the same mindset that makes somebody think that getting a job will make him rich. 
Look at him after 10 years of walking. There is nothing to show forth for him. If in four months, the average worker in Nigeria, if he does not collect salary for four months, he is literally poor and broke. Is that true? A worker that has been working for decades, 25 years, 15 years, 17 years, has even risen to a managerial level. No salary for as little as three or four months. That means something is wrong. Is God speaking to us? There are many of us, you receive maybe pocket money or, mo or money or whatever. Some of us who are working, you receive your salary and we believe that all I need to do is to get a job. Oh God, Shell, 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 Chevron, NLNG, CBN. Huh? Or if I become a soldier, just anything you believe will bail you out. Let me tell you something. They say experience is the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Why don't you find out those who are crying and see where they are walking already? And that should tell you that there must be something more. Is God helping us? There are many of us as we are seated right here. We are angry with our uncles. We are angry with our aunties because the last time you went, you just went and said, Sir, if you can give me only 20,000, all I need is 20,000. And I swear, that's how many of I swear to you, 20,000 and it's over. Don't ever give me anything again. They gave you 20,000 in three days. You didn't even start the business in the first place. You see that? You didn't even start it. Because most likely with that money, you were paying somebody you were owing. Is God speaking to us, please? The fifth myth that keeps people poor and will continue to keep people poor is what I call entitlement mentality. Everybody say entitlement mentality. Now write it. Entitlement mentality. The feeling that someone somewhere is responsible for your success and prosperity. Entitlement mentality. That feeling that my prosperity is in the hands of my uncle or in the hands of my father. After all, he gave birth to me. If he does not take care of me, God will punish him. The entitlement that government, I'm a citizen of Nigeria. From 18 years, they are supposed to be giving me money. Now I'm 35. Government is owing me for 18 minus 35. That number of years. Entitlement mentality. You see people carrying placards all around, loitering our streets in Nigeria, advocating a cause they will not directly benefit from because it gives them succor to pass blames. Entitlement mentality. You think one of your uncles or your friend or your pastor or your family, some of us are angry with our uncles. He's the director of of, of NMPC what is there to just give me a job wicked and stupid man you see his children you hate them they greet you good afternoon uncle say the day you greet me I wound you you are as stupid as your father entitlement mentality there are many of us don't laugh oh, there are many of us who hate our fathers and mothers and relatives you look at where you are sleeping and you look at your father and you just wish that you will do something wrong and let them arrest him just to ease off your pain this mentality is one of the things that have made us to hate rich people there is a natural inclination to resent and to hate wealthy people because every time you see a wealthy man it reveals to you that something he has done is what you are looking for so desperately and passionately and every time you see a wealthy man, that resentment. Hallelujah. Let promise or Michael or Pastor Femi come back next week here and you see a Range Rover Sports parked outside. First and foremost, people will ask, now get this guy. They say, Michael, say which one? Michael, Michael, that I know. Ah. It's not everything you see that it's just God that really knows what people do. Bible says envy not the wicked. You, you see that? 
Something about his success has brought pain to you. That's the reason why this cause, this I said, is actually a cause. Hallelujah. It's very important. How many ladies hate others? You love them when they look like you. The day they, they did not look like you, you say, uh -uh. hey, wonder shall never end. When did this lady even afford uh, this and that? I'm sure she has pinned down one man. That's always how they do. What if I'm sure God has blessed her? What if I'm sure her thinking has been straightened out and she's getting it right now? Notice, we tie a lot of negativism to wealth. You never see a man that is blessed, especially a young person. When you see somebody who is almost dying and they tell you he's rich, you know that this guy, even if he's just discipline alone, has taken him through. But you just see somebody of an average age or a young man, you just look and say, no way, something is wrong. See a lady, you say a lady. Many guys will say that, me, a man, how bad, this is an insult. This lady that I know, especially that you knew the person. You see that? Many of us have called our uncles occultists. We have ignored their sacrifices. You just know that the last time he left your house, he left with slippers. Now he came into your house with something and he blessed all of you. Immediately he leaves. Your mother, your father and your uncle sit back and they say, ah, ah, Are you sure this guy is not into drugs or armed robbery? Why do we have to associate wealth with negativism? This is why. Because of our frustration. Secretly speaking, we admire the people we resent in the open. We admire the feats that they have accomplished. And we wonder how they were able to do it. And rather than settling down with all humility to learn the precepts, we resent them as a way of easing out our own pain. Hallelujah. Friends, listen to me. Every one of us seated right here will have to make a choice in the course of this conference. It's more than a meeting. It's truly a conference. Every one of us will have to make a decision whether you want to remain the way you are and keep getting angry at others who are moving using seniority to justify why you should be richer than them or using the fact that you put pampas for them or using all this 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 cultural age-long stumbling blocks that stop people from moving forward or you can choose and say lord i'm face to face with my destiny and i'm ready to confront this what you never confront you will not conquer assumption is the least level of knowledge if you assume you you have your destiny your financial destiny straightened out you are already in error there is a spirit that attacks the message of wealth and prosperity in the body of christ now i know there are imbalances but let me tell you one of the strongest assaults of satan in a congregation is when the message of wealth and prosperity is about to come and he uses spirituality to launch that attack the moment you begin to hear a message like this something shuts you down you are not teaching of prayer or on the anointing or the wisdom of the spirit or levels of spiritual growth or fasting and praying or evangelism you are talking about money and you just shut down that's the devil wanting to destroy your destiny because sooner or later you'll find out that it takes more than preaching to have a successful ministry. Sooner or later you'll find out that it takes more than praying in tongues to raise kids. Is that true? Every one of us here is suffering or has suffered from at least one or more of these mindsets. And right now, before we continue, my job tonight is like a surgeon. There is a surgery that is about to begin. I just gave you this, this um, background before I build on what we are going to talk about tonight. I want to teach you something that will change your life forever if you care to pay attention. 
I am determined. I've made my decision already. But I want to see how that God will help all of us together to come into this decision. How to be wealthy. How to be wealthy. This is how to be wealthy. I want to give you the keys. And I give you a guarantee in the name of the Lord God of heaven. That if you are childlike enough to take these things I'm telling you. You and poverty will part ways forever. It doesn't matter what the limitations are. Hallelujah. Number one. The first key to really being wealthy is to make the decision to be wealthy. Write that word down, decision. The decision to be wealthy. The decision to be wealthy. Brothers and sisters, look at me. You came to Koinonia tonight because you decided to be here, true or false. You would have been in any other place but right from morning you had set it that you will be here and nothing stopped you no witch from your village appeared on the road and said go back because of the power of your decision are you hearing what i'm saying now there is a difference between a wish and a decision a wish is a desire a wish is a craving nothing more Many people wish to be wealthy. You go outside and stand. Hold 1,000 naira notes or 100,000 or a million and wave it and say, who wants to have this type all his life? You will be shocked to see all kinds of people come. Embracing that message. Oh, I want to be rich. However, many people think a wish is a decision. No, sir. A decision is a strong desire. Write it down. A decision is a strong desire that is backed up by the willingness backed up by the willingness to pay the price to see that desire accomplished. That's a decision. There is a difference between a wish and a decision. Many of you think you have decided to be blessed. You have, you hate poverty. You like prosperity. But you have not decided. The very first reason. Is God speaking to us? I can prove to you. Excuse me. I can prove to you that you have not made that decision. Show me what you are doing right now in your life. To support your decision. You decided to love God. And that decision. I can see the things you are doing. I see you running away from a nightclub. That is a sacrifice to honor your decision. Is that true? I see you panting after the word of God. I see you using the money that you should buy. Shoes and clothes with. To buy an electronic device. That you can use for your spiritual growth. That is a proof that you have decided. Hallelujah. I've seen you pray and fast for three days. One week. Others one month. Because you want to rise in the level of the anointing. You have decided to contend for the anointing. A decision is never a decision. Until there is a willingness and a readiness. To accept the responsibility. That will make that decision come to pass. So many have not decided to be wealthy. They want to be wealthy. Every time they hear success stories, they look and they say, ah, how did you do it? Ken, Ken, Ken. Ah, money like you. You see, all those kinds of cliches. And they turn, they say, ah, Nigeria is good for you, for some of us talk. They have not decided. How many times have you seen a very wealthy man that you have access to and you came and sat down and bought five alive dropped it at the feet of the person and say i came purposely because i want you to teach me the principles you are wealthy i've seen the proof other people just come and loiter the gate of rich people 
with all kinds of pregnant expectations hoping that their rent will be paid through the, that coming and the man drags his wife and their two children as proof to the man that the, the situation is serious and they stand in front of his gate uncle it's me who uh, James which James about why are you treating me like this they see my two children even if it's not for us just for my two children watch this the uncle counts 250,000 is that not true gives James what does the man tell the uncle thank you foolish man rather than receiving the money to say by the way sir sit on the floor and say junior whatever bring me a paper I want this to be the last time I'm receiving money from you what can I learn they collect the money and say thank you and go and commit the same blunder they did and by next year they are back again <laughs> uncle don't be angry oh. it's me again and some even say do you know it's because of me that God is blessing you, you it's because you don't know the prayer I'm praying for you pray for yourself like that you try to make people feel guilty because you think that you have a stake in their wealth Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of you have very wealthy parents. And you are just hoping that you, when you get to 30 or 40, they will now call you and say, now you're a man, you have three children, this estate is for you. What sort of a dream is that? Everybody say, I decide to be wealthy. It's shocking some of you right now because you are seeing that you have never decided you decided to get married some of you have made a decision i must marry this year you gave it a time target you made a decision right now you are on your fifth marriage book and you will truly marry because you decided to but you won't be rich because you have not decided to you hope you will be rich you pray you will be rich you wish you will be rich you beg to be rich you want to lambano the richness or riches no matter what greek and hebrew word you speak let me tell you the truth if you do not know the path to wealth you will you will end up in bitter frustration hallelujah those in school you are in school today because you decided to be in school there was a time you looked at that course and you said kai but something in you it was your decision that made you to run and go and write the exam in the midst of the rain. Your umbrella was missing, but you know 8.30, they may not allow you to enter. That decision sponsored that sacrifice. And you didn't apologize to yourself. Decisions are powerful. You preach a salvation message. And you give people room. And they decide, I want to give my heart to the Lord. And they prove that it's not just a wish by standing up to ignore the shame and the embarrassment. And sometimes you see people stand crying. They mean business with God. You are seated here right now because you decided to sit down. At the point you are tired of sitting, you have every right unhindered to get up and walk out of this place. Is that true? You are only seated here because of your decision. We do this in every other area accept our finances because we have been taught that it will happen automatically you must decide to be wealthy you can decide to reject poverty that's not the same as deciding to be wealthy i made up my mind that i was going to be wealthy that i was going to be blessed i took out time to make sure it was a decision that i honored and there is nothing that would change my mind about it right here where you are sitting look at me if you decide that what you need right now is 2000 to cure the current hunger because of that decision the 2000 will come but afterwards you will be poor is that true but you can decide and say i don't know the way i don't know what to do i'm clueless about the direction but start with a decision all decisions are free you don't pay for them that's why every man who is poor has a right to remain poor decisions are free you pay for knowledge you don't pay for decisions
Is God speaking to us? Decisions are absolutely free. Decisions depend on you alone. They don't depend on the cooperation of another person. So you have no excuse to say, I would have decided, but Kai, the way I saw this guy looking at me, what if I... No, 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 no. no. It's a personal decision. I will. I will. I release my will. I make that choice. I choose to partner with God. I choose to partner with the spirit of wisdom. Lay your hands on your head and say, I decide to be blessed. Say, I decide to end poverty. I decide to be wealthy. I may not know what to do. I may not know how to go about it. I may not know how to come out of my present situation. But I decide in the name of the Lord Jesus to be wealthy. This looks very simple. You only invite God into your financial life when you decide. The same way you invited him into your life, spiritually speaking, when you made the decision. Behold, I stand at the door. And what? If he knocked your heart to come into your life, he will knock on the door of your finances and remain there until you decide to invite him. You may not know what to do, brothers and sisters, but can you decide? Your father went to school. Your mother went to school. Your father got a job, but they never decided to be wealthy. They decided to get jobs, and so they got it. They decided to marry. They decided, how many children are we going to have? One said three, one had five. They voted. Majority carries the vote. You are five now. Right? Because of that decision. You decided to wear the dress that you are wearing today. No demon in your village, I say it again, Africa, no demon in your village showed up in your wardrobe and said, this one is my own. No. As you were picking the shirt, no spirit paralyzed your hand because your decisions were honored both by God and the devil. Is that true? You had a choice. We trivialize the power of decisions in our finances. And so you see a lot of people outside. This is how they talk. Kai, when will my story change? Oh God, oh God, that changes stories. That's not a decision. That's a communication of regret and frustration. It's not a decision. Oh, oh Lord, this job, if my arrears comes, ah, my life will change. It's still not a decision. A decision is I have come to the end of my life. I have seen what has happened to my father and my mother. I've seen myself beg my way through life. I have seen the fierceness of society. I have seen the inevitable frustration that comes as a result of poverty. And I decide, I make up my mind that my life is not going to be this way. Brothers and sisters, you are not drinking today because you decided to. There are bars that are open. Today is Friday. True or false? There were some of you who were drinking before. Yes, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon you, but it did not come upon a hardened heart. You could not change yourself, but you decided to embrace change. And so the change came. You may not have the power to change, but you have the decision to permit that power to come. Is God speaking to us? Say it again. I decide. To break that barrier of poverty in my family and in my life. Say, I decide that I will be wealthy. I will be blessed. That wealth and riches will be in my house. A true decision must be set as a goal. What is a goal? A goal is an expectation. A goal is an expectation. A clearly defined expectation. Clearly defined expectation. That's a goal. 
the moment you you set it as a goal to marry if you are not in a relationship what automatically it's like your love mode is switched on and suddenly you can see the difference between rose and um what's her name huh vicky you can see the difference between what's her name ada and all these people all of a sudden if you have not decided to marry you will see everybody as a sister in the lord a sister in the vineyard and all of these kinds of evangelistic things that dimension will never be activated until you decide true or false if you decide to be a competent musician or worship minister you will begin to discern difference between what you are doing and what they are doing otherwise if you come and you have a general sense you can sing and go off key and be smiling you don't even know you've gone off key because there is no passion in that area you have not set it as a goal goals give us focus it 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 weeds away distractions in our lives man can only accomplish what he sets as a goal so every other thing becomes secondary and you focus on that one thing until it is accomplished are you seeing now so if you put it as a goal to be financially blessed the devil tells you this is too carnal how can you put money in front of you like this and say i'm putting it as a goal whereas you do not know that it's a goal that can be accomplished so that it will give you room to focus on more spiritual goals hallelujah I only imagine the times that we will now begin to go on air launch tv ministries now start building structures and facilities for ourselves these structures will cost hundreds of millions and billions of naira if we ignore thank god we're a ministry that is very unapologetic about the reality and the necessity of wealth in building the kingdom and so we have irresponsible fathers a woman gets up she's pregnant but she's going to go and fend for the family and the man who got her pregnant sits down there guiltless right and just living his life hoping she will go and look for money and come back and cook and the man will eat and say kai why i, I thought we used to eat chicken what has happened to the chicken now he did not contribute in any way and he there is no sense of apology He's just waiting for her to give birth to that one and get her pregnant again. Without any sense because he has not decided. He has not seen the relevance of finance in family building. Help us tonight, oh God. Is God speaking to us? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to not in any way ignore what I'm telling you. It won't do me any harm because I've made my decision. What I'm doing to you right now is my contribution. To stop your tears of the future what i'm doing for you right now is my contribution to help you break that jinx of poverty once and for all so that you can enjoy the abundance that god has prepared for you the first way to be wealthy is to decide to set it as a goal you must set it as a goal there is nothing in life that you will accomplish if you do not set it as a goal you set your degree as a goal and no matter what it is your mind is on it the day you hold your certificate mission accomplished you get another goal you cannot put finances as one of those things and vaguely just say yes yes we'll look at it by god's grace when i start working i'll plan around my finances let me tell you that disrespect that dishonor for wealth will cost you more than you can bargain for i watched my family i've told you my story again and again i came from a very good christian family never been all these boys that go around doing all kinds of things i don't have all those necessary all those kinds of very funny pasts but one thing that i saw both of my parents they are, they are retired now but then both of them worked. They started working early. My father started working at 26 years. Brothers and sisters. And he's never lost a job. 
but in his old age I saw that man suffer I said well, what is the meaning of this there are many of us right now you sit down and you watch your father and you watch the tears out of his eyes because nothing can be done about the situation your father will go and ask you to borrow 2,000 naira from a neighbor somebody who was once a small boy pushing gere gere around your street now he has become blessed and your father will say please tell him baba said you should give 2,000 you be the one to go and collect it you feel guilty he goes his tongue a thousand times as he counts 2,000 and give you you go and give your father you buy something and he returns the change the lunch and the dinner of that family is dependent on that 2,000 and everybody eats and goes back and all you do in the night is to cry crying does not produce change it may comfort you emotionally but you must set it as a goal I can remember the day in my life I vowed before God that me and poverty we have drawn the line it was a decision I made up my mind that whatever it would cost me under God to explore what it would take to get out of this thing I never want to look at my children one day and see that I cannot afford to pay school fees for them or I cannot afford to bless them there are so many people imagine brothers and sisters that you came for koinonia and you saw that there were no chairs everywhere is packed and we say brethren um, there is a serious financial situation here right now everybody can you contribute whatever you can bring we need to buy fuel we need one jerry can of fuel as a matter of life and death Oh, apostle has not eaten. If you really want to hear anything sensible this night, please, let's rally around and rush and see how we can come to the rescue. No. You laugh about it and you trivialize it today. May God give you grace to start a ministry and you will respect what I'm saying. You will see how that you can pray and tongues won't come out because you cannot see where the finances will come out. Rabba and you stop. You will know when you stop. The load on your head is not demons. You are hearing voices. You are seeing things. That's what makes many of our fathers to be. They didn't start like that. At 40, he's talking to himself. Right? He sees you and calls you by the name of your elder brother. You think it's his fault? Something happened. A load that would have been lifted and thrown away was permitted to sit on his head for a long time. And that's the result. And many of us, as young as we are, that load is already coming shortly. You found out that you used to be kind and nice. Now at 27, see how angry you are at everybody. Welcome. The load is landing. It's like a lift. By the time you are 31, you hate everybody around you. 40, you hate your wife. 45, you hate your children. 50, you hate yourself. See that? Number two. There is an exact formula for wealth and abundance. That is for next week. Next week I'm going to be teaching you the formula for wealth. But right now, allow me to be a surgeon as we do a little x-ray just for a few minutes on our minds to help us. For the formula, we'll talk about that. The first way to be wealthy is the decision to be wealthy second is to know that there is an exact formula for wealth and abundance three the mental transition that brings wealth you must understand the mental transition that brings wealth the mental transition that brings wealth guys come and help me i think these things have gone let's push it forward let me have three people here please Everybody watch what I'm about to demonstrate. Never forget this for the rest of your life. One here, one here, one here, quickly. I classify people into three in terms of mindsets and transitions. Everybody watch, please. You will see yourself right now. There are three types of people based on mindsets versus their physical realities. Generally speaking, listen. Listen. Generally speaking, there is a law, and this is the law, that your physical condition, 
your physical condition today, today, whether you believe it or not, is a reflection of your ideology so far. Your physical condition today is a reflection of your thinking of yesterday. Are you getting me? Your physical condition tomorrow will be a reflection of what you are thinking right now. Your thought process, your mindset, the content of your ideologies. A direct, exact reflection of your thought life and the quality of your mindset. The level of ministry that we are enjoying right now is a direct reflection of what our mindset and understanding about ministry has been. If we never upgrade, this is the level we remain forever. But if we upgrade, then we rise. Your music ministry, your life, whatever it is that is happening in your life, I'm telling you right now, is a messless reflection of your mindset and your ideology. Let's have that in mind. So, I look at my life today and all that I see is a reflection of the way I have thought about God, about success, about people, about ministry, about life. There are three people. Watch this. The first type of people that we have are those who have poor mindsets and poor physical realities. Write it. A poor mindset dash poor physical reality. That's the first kind. I'm giving you a classification of people now in terms of wealth. This guy in this example now has a poisonous mindset about wealth. This is the guy that sleeps under the bridge. This is the guy that smokes around. This is the guy that believes that cheating and looting is the way forward. This is the guy angry with his uncle. This is the guy angry with God. This is the guy angry with government. Angry with his boss in office. There is a mindset that he has and there is nothing in his life. He's living a beggarly life. He's living a poor life and he has a lot of contemporaries who are like him. Are you getting my teaching now? All his contemporaries think like him. They think like him. So they all discuss. You hear them say things like, Kai, one day go better. That's the mindset. Poor mentality. They are the ones who borrow to do everything. They borrow to eat. They borrow to buy clothes. They borrow to buy phones. They do everything, borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. And they live perpetually in the course of debt. This is the person. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. This guy is blaming the witches in his village as the reason why he's poor. He's blaming his grandfather that cannot walk and he's saying the way he looked at me when I went to the village. The way his eyes was, that's why I'm poor. Are you seeing that? This guy is blaming his class of degree to why he's poor. This guy is angry with everybody. He wants to change. He hates rich people. He hates blessed people. He gossips about them. He resents them. And he's hoping to be like them. Paradox. Could that be you? Could this be you I'm describing right now? I know you are praying in tongues, but could that be you? That right now, the reason why your life has not changed, the reason why your pocket is empty, listen, the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is not money in their pocket. Money in their pocket is a, is a reflection of something going right. Money in their pocket is a sign that they have gotten something right. The money in their pocket, their financial abundance is their receipt in the school of wealth. It's a sign that they have purchased something true. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Unfortunately, we concentrate on changing our physical reality. This guy, this guy is trekking from pillar to post. This guy is living under a place where there is no roof, maybe an uncompleted building. This guy has been rejected by his family. This guy wants change. He cries every night. Oh God of heaven, will you not wipe my tears? But nothing changes. God seems to be infinitely silent about his situation because he does not know that before he prayed, the prayer had been long answered. God will not answer the same prayer twice. The reason why you hear him silent may be that he answered it before you called. It's only that we have not been trained to know how and when God answers prayers. Is God speaking to us, please? So, this is it. This guy does everything. Listen, his mindset is poor. So, everything in his life is a reflection of it. Give this guy one million naira. Something here will destroy the money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Give him a job in Shell. Something here will eat up the resources. Let his titan open doors for favor. Give him 10 million naira. Let him even win a lottery. Something here will frustrate what is in his physical reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? That she may house. That she may house. Something about his indecision. He will be under pressure and he will sell the house. And use the money to eat it. And robbers will kill him. He will run his mouth to the wrong people. They will beat him and collect the remaining money. And the guy will say, I remember this house was my own. Now they've renovated it. It was his own. No matter what you do to help this man, you waste your time. It's like pouring water in a basket. Hear me? If you really want to help poor people, you don't help them by giving them money. That's why I feel sad. I believe in charity, yo. But the solution to empowering people is not carrying bags of rice and floating around and snapping in front of um, bags of beans and sewing machine and, 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 and uh, uh, opening saloons and so on and so forth. You don't change people like that. All that rendezvous of giving people money I dash you 20,000. I dash you 50,000. And the person comes and says, Praise the Lord. I was nobody. But see now, they gave me 200,000. Is that what will make you somebody? There is an error. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Now, when this guy sees a wealthy man, this is what he says. If only I was in his condition. The only thing is that my father is a stupid man. When his friends were taking steps, he didn't take, he was drinking. Now he got born again too late. He got born again when he finished the whole money. And he thinks that's the reason. That's the only difference. And so he sees somebody counting money. He's about to buy a car. And he pays cash. And this guy looks and admires him and says, Hi! Life. Thinking that the difference between him and the rich man is just the money in their pocket. Oh, how wrong. How wrong. He thinks the man is rich because he's doing business. And he said, ah, ah, but this guy is rich. He said, no be businessman. He's a businessman. Go and do it. If all there is to wealth is business. Go and do it. There is still demand for more of that line of business he's doing. So go and do it. If you think all there is to wealth is business. Are you seeing the balance now that I'm giving many of us? Because all through, there are many of us, the moment they talk about finance, you just suit up and you just think CEO. <laughs> Calm down, it's not CEO. It's right here. Your mindset. Everybody say my mindset. My understanding. God wants to step into his life and change his story. But they limited the Holy One. His mindset. He has not made the decision to be blessed. He does not care. He only wants things to change. This man does not want to take responsibility for his destiny. All he wants is let friends, in-laws, cousins give him money and now as a result of that frustration the day his daughter starts going out with an unbeliever so long as he's getting money he does not mind let her go to hell so that i will get money it doesn't matter many in the body of christ are here favor when it comes to this life 
is like one million times zero because favor comes to hit a rock so god has been sending in favor to this man when he does calculation of all the monies and the opportunities that has come this man because of his mindset he does not know the law of honor and so all the destiny helpers that come into his life he throws them away because his mindset is destroying him is god speaking to us i'm not just talking about money he meets a rich man has access to that man for two weeks and he's there licking his mouth waiting for the last day when the man will leave so that he will count fifty thousand. because his mindset does not teach him that until here is changed your hand cannot change that's why the first dimension of the anointing for wealth hear me is not to give you money thou anointed my head with oil there is a reason why it's your head it starts with first thou anointest my head with oil something must happen to your head for your cup to run over why didn't he say thou anointed my hand i thought you hold cup with your hand thou anointed my head there is an anointing that needs to do something here for my cup to start running over my cup is at the mercy of my head so the bible says ye have an unction from the holy one he said that anointing can teach you that anointing can teach you the anointing does not just give you power to gyrate around and say i have the esther anointing whether you have deborah's anointing esther anointing uh, jennifer's anointing, it's not going to do anything brothers and sisters the transition something about his mindset resisting god and is resisting money here he's waiting for god to come and change his life i will wait till my change comes he doesn't know what he's saying no. he thinks he knows i will wait he justifies that the reason why he's here is because god wants him to be here whereas that is the wealthy place are you getting me now watch the transition the first mindset is what poor mindset poor physical reality nothing in him is changing watch this the moment this guy watch this please everybody just look up before you write the moment this guy decides that i am tired of my life i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this come on now you you, you step home and immediately you get home you see your mother crying you see your father crying and you say enough is enough that's a decision that, that's a defining moment for desperate people do desperate things and we press in there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this. you are here praying in tongues fasting a prostitute sleeps with somebody overnight brothers and sisters a woman who is going to hell and the next day she wakes up a millionaire and here is somebody praying and fasting in tongues and the heavens are closed is god that wicked is that the god they taught you something is wrong we're tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this for many years in my life let me tell you I cried and cried to the God of heaven. I said, Lord, you've got to change my situation. But this is where I was standing. I've loved God all my life. I've served God all my life. I've given my entire life to God. But nothing changed in my life. I saw myself rising spiritually. People liked me. The hand and the anointing of the spirit was strong upon my life. But this financial mountain refused to move. I fasted for days. Dry fasting. All kinds of fasting. I prayed. Nothing changed. The first book that would begin to give me an idea that there was something wrong I was doing in my life was Discovering Your Purpose by Miles Monroe. It was not a book on finances, but it it planted a seed and I said something is wrong something is wrong I listen it takes humility to break out of poverty if you are there arrogantly explaining yourself the Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation not the explanation 
I, I remember that night when I cried to the Lord of heaven. I said, Lord, you've got to do something about my life. You have shown me visions of my assignment. I'm not confused about my assignment. I cried to God. I cried to God. And that was when I made up my mind. The Spirit of God never spoke anything to me in terms of, oh, thou my son, stand up, wipe your tears. God didn't say anything. The only word that God spoke to me was, as for the ancient parts, right? As for the ancient parts, that's what the Spirit of God told me. As for the ancient parts, and he stopped there. Ah, I said, oh God, what is the meaning of this? That's not the kind of solution. Because you can imagine, with my mind, all I was thinking about was money to succor the current hunger first. Before we even talk of destiny. Destiny is, you know, when you are alive. As for the ancient parts. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. He didn't say, as for the future parts. The revelation of that was, son, why do you want to discover what has been found? Why are you asking me to answer a prayer I answered before you were born? My silence is because I do not answer the same prayer twice. It's against the law of my majesty. Once have I spoken, it's you that will hear twice. And I made up my mind. I began to search the word. And I fell into the teachings of Bishop David Oyedepo. May God bless him. May God honor him in life and in death. It began to revolutionize my mind. I said, wow. I never knew. I was never taught tithing. I was never taught this. I began to explore from there the materials of Kenneth Hagin. I started reading a lot of business. I bought tons and tons of business books. I read any and everything that had to do with finances. And the moment I started doing that, I couldn't make sense out of what I was reading. The only thing I knew was that I was the one who was responsible for where I was. I remember standing that night and saying, Lord, I take responsibility. I stop blaming people. I stop hating people. I make up my mind. Today, I know what I did. This was it. A transition are you getting what I'm saying the transition from a poor mindset and a poor physical reality does not start by changing your physical reality it starts by the decision for your mindset to change like many of you many of you are this man standing right now something needs to change and if any prayer would be prayed this night is that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon you so that your cup will run over now watch this this guy yes he's sitting like you right now listening to me teach and all of a sudden he makes up his mind i'm tired of where i am watch this i am ready for change do you know the first thing that will happen that decision that decision will experience a war in his mind look up look up everybody something in him will reject the decision he's trying to make the old man the old wine skin is fighting something about to come the moment you make a decision there will be war in your mind your old mentality will say what are you doing that's why they sang that song i'm coming out of my comfort zone because it's the zone you are comfortable you have blamed government right now this is what that decision will do to you when you stand other friends will come and say pastor femi a luta continue let's keep struggling and say no i've made a decision the first mistake or not mistake really the first challenge you will start experiencing your friends will say something about you is changing you are not looking like us are you getting me they will start fighting you they will start making you feel that the decision you are taking is a foolish one you too you will see the mountain and say when will i get there but make the decision watch this sooner or later a mindset this transition is is coming to pastor femi now initially he would not wash his clothes he would wear any dirty thing and live like that but that mindset is already something is shifting 
he's sleeping under the bridge he's wearing a dirty cloth he's going to start washing his clothes now the next time he appears with his clothes washed and iron his friends something in his mind is now pushing him and saying you don't belong here anymore are you hearing what i'm saying he will start feeling it this level starts pushing him away because the transition it will start with persecution it will start with gossip this is the pushing away he's saying we are secretly acknowledging that you are rising we are trying to bring you down but your determination is too great so we persecute you out of this realm we drive you out of this realm everybody sings the song you just write every song and you are thinking let me go and wax an album and you hear a message about excellence and being world class and you settle down and say i'm packing up any project of album or anything i'm not producing anything i'm giving myself two years of intense rehearsal and training all your friends say are we ready to go to the studio say sorry i use the money to go and enroll in a music school they will hate you as you begin to learn about ad lipping voice control vocal discipline what happens a shift is happening you are still here but gradually something is moving you the way you think when they are gossiping you are quiet very soon you find out that you can no longer connect with them it's a sign that the plane has started lifting a transition is happening you are still poor but something is changing you are moving to this second person this second person is a wealthy mentality but a poor physical condition wealthy mentality so now you have left the realm of a poor mindset poor physical condition you are now a wealthy mindset but still a poor physical condition this is the hardest part of the journey to wealth where there is a paradox there are two realms fighting within you in your mind you are already a rich man you have read the books but physically nothing is showing yet this is where many people give up because we beguile ourselves into thinking we are not making progress you do not know that you have left here here when you talk to a rich man you talk like him you are already happy because your mindsets are similar when you talk to a blessed man he says you are smart you are going far but your physical reality is still poor when you talk to a poor man he hates what you are saying but he can live with you because your feet so you are in between the wealthy place and the place of poverty and this is where great men fall because you are asking oh god i've been praying no you are reading the books you are hearing the seminars you are still eating the same thing you were eating but brother you are changing you are no longer where you used to be this is where a few of us who have taken some decisions are here and there things are already working little money comes in one little breakthrough people are already recognizing your paradigm but the truth is you are still physically speaking when they join you and this guy there is no difference but there is a difference is god speaking to us i won't go back i can't go back to the way i used to be before your presence came and changed me hallelujah many of us are here right now at this point there is no physical cash to prove the way you talk is a lonely path because the rich cannot come to you and the poor will run away from you so you are alone mentally speaking you are here physically speaking you are here are you getting what i'm saying and that shift is very constraining you are still experiencing failures here and there but people do not know that the change has happened when they see you they call you with what you used to be or what they know you as there is no way you can prove to them you have left their realm don't be under pressure to prove any point the system itself will prove the point have you ever been taught this that you are learning have you been taught this this was a revelation that the holy spirit gave me i didn't read it in any book i wrote it down as he was dictating it for me the transitions that it all starts right here pray and fast at this level if you do not make a decision and allow the holy spirit to change your mind 
you are moving nowhere my brother get a job in nmpc at this level nothing significant will happen i guarantee you in the name of the lord right here you do not have results but here and there there are consolations you are receiving watch this at this point when you continue doing what brought you from here to here and add a few other things that i'll be teaching us next week what brought you from here to here is not the same thing that will take you from here to here there are some things you will add to it from here that will take you to the wealthy place and so he says thou has caused men to ride upon our heads we walk through water and through fire but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place i announce to you that there is a wealthy place there is the place that is beyond your place of birth there is a place that is beyond suffering and financial hardship many are unwilling to pay the price watch this many people in this area try to dress like that man to prove that they are there but their mindset betrays them they try to buy his kind of house and it strangles them they try to take their children to his children's school and it strangles them many in this place some of you here are giving people an impression you are there whereas this is where you are there must come a time in every man's life where you must take responsibility and humble yourself and stop lying if you are not a millionaire you are not if you show me one million naira i'm not interested because it's as deceitful as a piece of paper your mindset will prove to me whether you can show me that next year or that will be the last time you will show me one million naira never get impressed when somebody shows you a car or a house let him show you his mindset and then you will know whether he can preserve what he has carried i can dash you money i can dash you a mindset i can dash you house favor comes but the benefits of favor is built through wisdom the bible says through wisdom not through prayer not through favor favor brings the blessings lack of wisdom drives it away favor brings the rain your mindset is like a basket you keep it outside and all through the rainy season you lift it up and the only thing you have is a wet basket a foretaste but not the reality my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you oh god my pain is calling you oh god my decision is calling you oh god my seriousness is calling you oh god take my prayer Oh God, take my praise. Oh God, take my praise. Take my praise. It's calling you. Take my praise. Take my praise. It's calling you. I look at my life today and I am humbled. I was shedding tears this afternoon as i turned back to look at where god has brought me from and i said god you are faithful and god said no i'm not just faithful you too you are faithful it was our faithfulness together i know that sounds very religious but it took my embracing his faithfulness to take advantage of it i will never be poor again for the rest of my life till jesus comes it's not a confession it's not something I'm trying to claim. I signed out honorably never to return to that realm again. No matter what happens to the economy of Nigeria, there's no returning again. You can make that decision. It starts with a decision, not a wishing. Not saying, ah, it's better for some people. No. Never ever. There was a time in this ministry, Pastor Jax is here. The first time we were going for our crusade, brothers and sisters,
believers came together and raised money we did not have money to pay the hotel the hotel where we would lodge we saw all kinds of miracles on the crusade ground but it did not change our financial status let me tell you i was almost being locked in the prison because the sound people we could not pay them how much One hundred and fifty thousand. i will never forget I lay down in frustration. I remember one of my friends in frustration signed a check of 90,000 for me. I was so happy. I gave the sound people. They went to the bank and the check bounced. And they returned back in anger and they said, look, we are coming to arrest you. I said, Lord, if they arrest me, it's for the gospel. My altar is calling you. Oh God. My sacrifice is calling you. I was in community market, your corn market. Your corn market. I've eaten there. I know that I don't know how it is now, but I know that place very well. Where you buy food and you don't order pure water. Pure water was a luxury. What for? When there is water in that jar. You order garia soup and and, 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 and and no meat. 30 naira exactly. I remember telling the woman, please don't embarrass me here. This is what I have. I didn't ask for meat. As you are laughing, I hope you are seeing the seriousness in what I'm communicating. This ministry will never be poor forever till Jesus comes. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Listen, when God opens your eyes and gives you the key, you come into a realm of dominion. I don't care what is happening in your life right now. Let me tell you something. I submit to you with all humility. I know what it means to be poor. And I know what it means to be blessed. I can show you how to get there. I may not boast to know all, but I can show you something that can take you out of where you are. Next week, I'm going to be sharing with us the formula. In the last one year of my life, I have learned more. In fact, let me tell you, compared to the things I learned in the last one year, I looked at myself, I said, Joshua Selman, what, what have you, I have spoken in, 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 in financial conferences. I have spoken in business meetings. But the thing that the Lord opened my eyes to and God connected me to uncommon mentors. Uncommon mentors. Some dead, some alive. Uncommon mentors whose words are like the words of God. When you watch a master do something, the proof of mastery is ease. You will tear down the mysticism Hallelujah. This is where many of us are. You are under pressure to do business because you think it will hurriedly take you to the wealthy place. Calm down. You notice we have not mentioned business. We have not even mentioned money many times. We are talking of mindsets. There is a surgery God is doing. And right here, brothers and sisters, is your dream come true. Right here is mission accomplished. Right here, is the realm where you do not think about money again. 
right here is the realm where you can serve God with peace of mind right here the name is the wealthy place the place where few have come is a place of rest you enter your financial Sabbath right here is the place where high blood pressure will not kill you again right here is the place where no matter the stress of your village people or you financially it will be inconsequential right here is the place where you will serve God and fund your assignment and do that which God has called you to do in peace it's called the wealthy place this is God's destiny this is God's desire to transit you and my job in this series is to attempt with the cooperation of your seriousness and your diligence to show you the path that transits you from there to here because there is a wealthy place there is no fear here because you did not get your wealth by crooks and pranks now you will understand the definition of my the, my definition of financial prosperity not just the ability to have abundance but the ability to be able to replenish to multiply and to sustain its availability at this point you have the keys hallelujah i'm going to demonstrate something that many of you have watched me do it can, can i have a few people gentlemen sorry for inconveniencing you please come let's have like um i need at least six people one two three one two three four five six three of you stand here please facing one another no three stand here three stand here everybody watch and don't let the devil deceive you to believe you know what i'm saying just pay attention to what i'm saying because this is how the devil cheats people in church now watch this please go back guys this is what i want you to learn please if you can lift your right hand anything you can find whether your watch just lift anything up that represents your results watch this these are all the things that you want now he's lifting money now he's lifting all of this these are different dimensions in life watch this the way god programmed life is that you don't all these things they are lifting lift it guys are needed in your destiny but to start looking for them one by one is a burden God did not give you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Most of us, when God tells you, you need influence, you need relationship, you need a media ministry, you need finances, you need to travel abroad. How do you start looking for these things one by one? How old will you become before you get them? Let me show you how it works. You don't look for money. You never find it every realm and every level in your life has the possibilities attached to it to come if this is level one there is something that should come to level one if this is level two there is something that should come to level two you don't bring them by getting them you bring them by growing let me show you how the law works for every step i take come close to watch this i'm in one room poor and broke from a family where nobody has risen but i'm listening to joshua selman's message and he's preaching and i'm listening to it lord i know that you are changing me watch this i don't even know that these things are coming closer to me because i can't see them i'm still in the one room let me show you how the law works God has called you to be an entrepreneur. He has called you to be a man of God. Now, I'm listening to Miles Muro's materials. I'm listening to all of these things. Oh, there is something called the law of honor. That honor is the key to access. I've grown. Watch this. Are you seeing that now? Everything you are looking for is also looking for you. But it is not looking for this version of you. Please go back, guys. Is someone learning now? there is a version of you that wants to get this a version of you that wants to sit in business class you sit with business class with only 100 naira in your pocket you are not yet there so you go back you know you have entered a realm because everything around you grows to support that realm you cannot buy a jeep 
and be looking for one gallon of foil to foil it you are not there are you seeing now if it is by growth you get to a point where you can buy a jeep then other supporting areas would have grown to make foiling a car not an issue this is the mistake and the fallacy of a fake life you came to church sit down and learn watch this now because for some of you i'm showing you a graphic picture of what god is doing with you now you are seated in that house and you are saying lord will you ever lift me and then you keep learning and then you keep learning and then you keep learning one day somebody just calls you and says where are you is the law of time and chance happening remember the power of god is supervising that law you're a businessman someone now says can you help me sell one land um, and you sell it and make three hundred thousand. it is small compared to the kingdom financier billionaire you are to be but it is a test it is only god showing you that this thing is working now you keep engaging these laws a time will come where even you cannot push them away the moment you are growing even if you try to push them they won't go you push money away it will not go because your growth has brought it to your life are you getting what i'm saying now now watch this by the time you stand this way everything has surrounded you the media interview you have always looked for you forgot about it and focus on growth the jeep that will not make people sleep now you have cars you don't even know what to do with it because they were designed to follow growth not just desire believers if you pay attention to what i'm saying you will look for me one day and say apostle thank you let's go back this is where you are my dear brother nobody knows you yet you are a man of god that god has said you will go to the nations there is temptation to live a fake life and get into premature manifestation and god says don't worry oh god but i am i am 30 years old and i don't have a car god says just focus on growing just focus on growing and while you are growing one day god will position your destiny helpers in a conference and bring you there to preach and then because you have allowed yourself to be transformed by the time you preach you see this man holding money he will carry what will be somebody's one year salary and give to you just when you want to rejoice god says ah we're still in the school of the spirit this is not all you need this is just to encourage you that it is working let's go back to class now many people out of pride just stand and start bragging and says no can i be honest with you you can go back and everything also will go back this is the mystery behind balloon success now watch this i can use willpower and i can manipulate my way to hold this whereas i have not grown the laws of god's justice system will interpret this as a lie i will lose this thing no matter how careful i am life must take me back to the real place that befits my mindset can i be honest with you my dear people hear me this is where living a fake life if you eat tomorrow's bread today you will be hungry tomorrow if you wear tomorrow's cloth today if all you have is a trouser of 500 naira iron it with honor it is only your body wearing it your mind is already in a boutique shopping for your next level of life walking with the holy spirit we live in a world today where people are proud uh, they feel ashamed of process if you come and meet me in a one room with my bible and my candle and i'm praying and reading a book usually i'll be afraid and ashamed and so i will lie and tell my friend can you borrow me your house so that i will give a narrative that i'm making it no the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that people can rise and can i tell you this let men laugh while you rise they will be the witnesses the day you rise they will be the ones who tell people no 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 minus this person we knew him we saw him when he started make up your mind that there is no living a fake life anywhere don't borrow any money to go and buy clothes and buy this and buy a car that debt is killing you your mindset is cooperating with satan to bring you back punishing yourself in cycles 
simply because you want to give a narrative that you're successful you can find rest God's way one last time let me act your journey right now for some of you you have gotten to level one some of you are already millionaires but that's not all God wants to do some of you are billionaires but that's not all God wants to do can I tell you this until you get to a point where you can give to the kingdom without inconvenience you are not yet there so as I kneel to pray as I come for koinonia every week let me tell you what is happening to you week one week two you don't look like it week three all that falling you are falling under the anointing you stand up and feel your wevon fell out. don't worry don't worry this is what is happening to you I know you are laughing but take seriously what I'm saying you are listening to the word of God others are sleeping you are awake praying you are studying materials all because you want to build your mind a day will come you will see people's prayer requests coming to you you didn't remember praying for them but you fulfill the Lord that brought them they will come so close to you you will drive them and they will not go away a day will come you say God these cars are enough just when you are saying it a call will come and somebody will say God told me and God says I can't stop you are obeying the law I must back it please do not think what you are hearing is some entertainment from a preacher no I fear God too much to come and waste your precious time here Alabara. You are the mighty God. Hey, Lato Bichu. You are the glorious God. Allah Bara. You are the mighty God. Hey, Lato Bichu. You are the glorious God. Let's go back one last time, gentlemen. Watch this. This was what God told me many years ago son do not worry about these things focus on my principles that what you could not eat then you will eat it tomorrow the first crusade that we went to they were less than maybe about the size of our worship team here can you imagine praying and fasting for weeks as if you would die only to get to the crusade ground we were in debt the same ladies who were in the welfare were in the worship team they climbed trees to plot firewood for us to cook before they went to sing but it was only our bodies that were there powerful crusade and i said lord someday nations and kings will come transformation in partnership with the word of god will take us there and today to him be the glory and this is only one step out of the cave can I tell you this do not feel embarrassed by the inconveniences that you may see right now stop faking it stop roaming around getting angry and feeling this person should have helped me the fact that they cannot remember you means you are not walking by this law there is a level that when you get to your helpers must remember you so you see that it was only the body of Joseph that was in that prison Joseph knew I'm sure Joseph was comforting them and they were saying Joseph what is the basis of your confidence you are a prisoner like us he said no it is only my body that is with you when I get up I will make sure that I favor you and in one night no here is the fallacy of saying people just came out of nowhere no they rose to match where their minds have always been just because you did not see their training process does not mean they were not trained you might be a politician here please hear me you are starting as a local government chairman but your level of kingdom and mental transformation is the mindset of a senator a mindset of a president a mindset of an ambassador can I tell you the truth it will be impossible for you to remain in that position I don't care what party you are 
the force that backs this law is so powerful that no institution on earth sustains the power to stop an individual who fulfills this law this is true so the lord is telling you right now why is it that in spite of the fact that i'm getting money i'm not doing anything you are focused on getting not growing the first law i'm teaching you this night i can't believe we've spent so much time on just one law next time you rise and someone says you are just lucky tell the person please sit down i have a few things to tell you out of a heart of love and comfort it is not luck it is understanding are we blessed one last time never forget this teach your children teach everyone you know you are a ceo gather the people in your company and tell them stop complaining about the money you are receiving the money you are receiving is not all i am paying it is what your mindset instructed me to pay you the day you rise the instruction will change let this be your destiny in the name of jesus that by growth by growth everything that you are looking for today by growth when it comes by growth you are not afraid because everything will grow together are we blessed gentlemen god bless you i really appreciate you let's celebrate them let's give them a big has someone learned something today Packaging without mental upgrade will only lead you to frustration. You will give a narrative, you will not have the transformation to defend. Are we together? Yes. You cannot claim you're a millionaire and then Mama will ask you for 10,000 and you are talking stories. You are not there. Simple. By faith, you are there. In the spirit, you are there. But physically, if you are not there, be patient and work with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Focus more on becoming than doing. You will do, but let it come after you have become. Your physical environment will gradually and eventually reflect the true state of your mindset. Your physical environment will gradually and eventually reflect the true state of your mindset i don't have the time and i think i've taught it here how the mind is renewed you must have access to superior word-based ideas and information the first way to upgrade your mind is access to superior word-based information teachings like this that come to challenge status quo and to build you number two repetition of those ideas until conviction is established hearing once will not bring transformation you must hear again and again can i tell you there are teachings and materials i was sharing with the school of ministry student i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not there are materials i have listened to more than six thousand times one material the goal is not for information the goal is for transportation into my mind until it becomes true number two are we still here so the first law is the law of mental transformation the second law that commands wealth and abundance in this kingdom physical law is called the law of value please write it down the law of value your value is a measure of your skill your gift your abilities whether acquired or inherent your value is a measure please write it down your value is a measure of your skill your gift your ability whether acquired or inherent proverbs 18 and verse 16 your value is a measure of your usefulness to the marketplace usefulness not to destiny it is a measure of your usefulness to the marketplace the marketplace is a mystery 
it's not just talking about a market like your shop or mall or whatever it is a marketplace is a name given to the platform where demand and supply meet it's called a marketplace so your value is a representation of your usefulness to the marketplace write this down your value is also a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions don't put a full stop just write please be patient you are learning something for your destiny your value is a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions that are needed and useful please underline needed and underline useful within the context of a civilization let me take it again your value is a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions that are needed and useful solutions that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization that means your value must be needed and useful to prosper you just because it is value does not mean you will prosper that value must be needed and it must be useful you have that down write this please your value decide who pursues you and who rewards you your value decides who pursues you and who rewards you this is very important because you want to live a rewarded life and now we are learning that in addition to your mental transformation your value a measure of your problem solving ability decides who pursues you and who rewards you we get paid and rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace we get paid and we get rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace africa wake up nigeria wake up these superstitious ideas we have about wealth to believe that all we need to do is just to drop seeds as important as it is and our lives will magically transform into transgenerational wealth those teachings may have come from well-meaning people but it is not accurate based on the authority of scripture and the wisdom we glean from those who have that result value we get paid and rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace write this down you must discover and develop problem solving skills and abilities if you want to prosper you must discover and develop problem solving skills and abilities if you want to prosper superstitiously hoping that you will become a millionaire that you will be blessed just like that may not get the job done you must discover and you must develop problem solving skills and abilities thank you jesus write this down please become a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored become a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored all of these sentiments that come using tribe religion gender age they only become issues when your value is not needed and useful and when you have not invested in yourself to discover and develop the moment you discover and develop your value under normal circumstances you will veto the sentiments of gender sentiments of religion sentiments of whatever it is most people who are willing to pay you are desperate for results they don't really care whether it's a male hand or a female hand that provides that result the moment you are able to solve that problem can i tell you this look up please if a billionaire's daughter is about to die he does not care whether it is a muslim's hand that operates her to heal her whether it is a christian's hand whether it is a 30 year old hand 
or a 60 year old hand let the hand just have the ability to make sure that person is healed and the rewards will come there are we together now someone who wants to design an estate and is ready to invest billions in it he does not care whether the person who does the architecture is a female is a male is a, a, a whatever it is is young or old the moment you have the competence and the value to be able to deliver that results this is why you find out that in places like Europe and China you have young boys who some of them have not even gotten to teenage and yet they are doing all kinds of things around the world because rewards answer to value rewards don't answer necessarily to age rewards don't answer necessarily to gender they answer to value whoever is solving the problem is the one who will receive the rewards are you learning this is very powerful the law of value make up your mind that you will never be ignored in your world not by trying to look for a name for yourself be too valuable to be ignored there are 7.6 billion people across this world and growing but there are certain people around the globe who are called authorities across several areas and several sectors is that true there are associations literally that determine who will come to what dimension and what state because of the level of value that they have to provide no matter where you are around the world if you must attain that level of result it will not be by ignoring them may you become that kind of person oil is valuable to nigeria and africa and to the world go to the places where they mine oil in this nation and you watch the rigor and the activities that go on there when you see oil coming is a is a dark smelly paste that is slippery it's not something you should desire and yet nobody runs away from it because we have learned by experience that as dark and as smelly as it is it is what literally controls the wealth of nations are we blessed there is no market i know that does not have patronage whether the market is in the bush whether the market is close to the road once it is the market day you will see everybody finding their way to go there value there is something to be bought there and there is something to be sold there watch this there are people who go to meet herbalists and occultists for power or position or whatever it is and do you know that people can get up from here and go anywhere around the world and even several places in this nation you can get to a place and a herbalist a rickety looking man who is sitting down in a smelly hut he will tell you turn back and you will turn back keep your jeep there and walk on barefoot look at all the sacrifices that you, a man can go through with joy why because there is an assurance at the back of that sacrifice that you will get some political position or maybe your company will receive some contract everybody say value it is my prayer for you that you will be so valuable that whilst you are sitting down many people's prayer requests will be looking for you in genesis chapter 41 let's hurry up in genesis chapter 41 We'll read from verse 14, then we'll jump to 33. This was the story of, jo of Joseph and Pharaoh. Remember, Joseph interpreted the dream in Egypt, and Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, the Bible says, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh, 33. Having interpreted the dream, he now began to use his value to proffer an economic solution to save the day now therefore let pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise it was a diplomatic way of saying pharaoh i dare you go around egypt and check if you will find somebody like me now let pharaoh look out for a man 
discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Next verse. Let's hurry up. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up a fifth part of the land in the seven plenteous years. Uh huh. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the land of Pharaoh and let them heap food in the cities. We're reading. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. As a result, Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this? May that be your testimony. That everywhere in your office, in your place of work, in your field of endeavor, that they will look around, not from a competitive standpoint, but from a standpoint of value. They can say, can we find such a one as this? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. What rewards that follow value? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. It says, only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over the land of Egypt. No interview, no consultation, no thinking about it, no come back tomorrow. The lifting power of value. Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Next verse. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him, bow the knee to someone who 24 hours ago was a prisoner but valuable. Let me prophesy over someone here in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you before this week runs out on account of the value and the investment you have been making in yourself the Pharaoh that will send for you the Cyrus that will send for you I command that they must send for you and lift you in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down every blessed man is looking for valuable people nobody wants a liability and a nuisance in his place of work in his place of business stop bringing the issue of sentiments and say i have a brother somewhere he does not want to give me a job are you valuable there are many people who complain and say you are not giving us this contract will you do the job if given value is an enhancer of favor when you are valuable it is easy for favor to find expression in your life number three for sake of time we have to rush the third law physical law that is responsible for wealth and abundance is called the law of productivity the law of productivity productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services the ability to create make or enhance products and services another definition productivity is the ability listen carefully this is my definition now. The ability to refine and develop your value and then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful. And then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. I will take it again. That productivity is the ability to refine and develop your value. Your value just like crude oil once it remains crude it is only potential it cannot bring you much you will need to refine it you will need to develop your value and then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful and then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base hallelujah 
Are we learning? Please look up. If I use a fetcher and I look for any well around this environment and I fetch water, watch this now, and I use a white leather bag and I pour that water inside and I bring it to you as a dignitary, I say, this is my gift for you. Are you going to accept it? If I tell you to pay 100 naira, say for instance, for that, will you pay for it? But the same water that you are rejecting and getting angry and, and you feel insulted for being, for, for being served that water in a leather bag, someone will process that water. It's the same water from the same source sometimes and package it in a very beautiful bottle and now give it to you and sometimes in a hotel you can pay as much as 2,000 naira with joy. What are you paying for? It is not the water. You are also paying for the refinement. Are we together now? Listen to me. As powerful as value is, your value may be sufficient for commendation but maybe not for reward. You have to turn from value to productivity. Many gifted people in this nation remain bankrupt because they are not productive. They are valuable. I can sing, but nobody will reward you because it is not yet refined. I can preach, but nobody will place a demand upon your grace because you've not packaged your value. I can cook. I can bake. I'm a good speaker. I have a very good argument for government. All of that is just stories. Value. As important as it is. You must contend for productivity please shout it say productivity. productivity that means you must turn your value by development and refining into products and services that are needed and useful then you can serve them with excellence to a targeted consumer base are we together now yes a great friend and brother Pastor Nathan Elbasi, one time he was sharing his story. How that not, not too many years before now, he was in this same country and would sing with a good voice, with grace, and yet not be rewarded and honored the way he's doing now. The difference was that he turned value or he moved past the step of value to productivity. Now you want to invite him, for instance, you must be willing to go through all of the logistics that you go through with joy. Why? Because you are not only bringing a man who is valuable, you are bringing a man who is productive. Could this be why people keep commending you? Ah, Madam, your food is so nice, and yet you are poor. The day you make up your mind to now turn that value right from your kitchen, now you begin to cook and find a way of packaging it and take it to somebody who has an influence over so many people and say this is just a seed for you to taste and the man says who did this you say you how long have you been doing this i've done this all my life okay i need 100 pieces of this by tomorrow you see that now god now positions your destiny helpers and in one month you are already cooking for kings it is only when you serve kings that you receive the reward of kings. Never stop developing yourself until you find out you are in the palace. The palace is where the gold is. The palace is where treasures are kept. If you are serving gatekeepers and serving people, thank God for that, but keep evolving. The day you see the king, you can know that you have found rest. You cannot receive the rewards of kings when you are outside the palace serve your way through excellence develop yourself whether you are in ministry some of you here are great men and women of god but you have not come to a point where you give yourself the frame that makes your value productive are we together the law of productivity when i found this it changed my life i made up my mind that i will invest in every aspect of my life and make sure that I continue to package my value and to serve it with excellence. Being valuable is not enough. Your value must be refined, your value must be packaged, and your value must be served with excellence to command a reward. 
being valuable is not enough your value must be refined your value must be packaged your value must be served with excellence to command a reward therefore tonight i encourage you to reject and fight mediocrity fight mediocrity like you fight satan fight it out of your life it is the sponsor of a mediocre life is a sponsor of a defeated life fight mediocrity productivity requires exposure you cannot be productive until you are exposed exposure means that you broaden your horizon beyond your current scope of sight you have to be able to expand your mind and your thinking positive exposure is very very needed if you will be productive productivity also requires creativity and innovation you have to be creative you have to be innovative you have to be creative you have to be innovative write this down i thought to add this very quickly before we skip to the next area competence still about productivity competence and excellence are magnets attracting people resources and opportunities to your life competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting resources and attracting opportunities to your life competence and excellence are magnets please look up why do you go to a place like transcorp or any of the top hotels within this city and pay so much for a room or pay so much for a meal and sometimes the exact thing you are eating there are we together i was teaching the school of ministry students and we laughed over it that you can go to a hotel and just for a tiny cup of coffee you can pay three thousand whereas a shop just outside that hotel you can buy the coffee the spoon and the cup you will use for less than one thousand are we together because you are not just buying coffee you are buying the atmosphere too you are buying the excellence you are buying the competence you are buying the, the ambience the sense of honor everything is factored to make what would be 200 naira to become 3000 make up your mind to be productive make up your mind to be competent make up your mind to be excellent let's hurry up number four the law of increase so the first is the law of mental transformation the second is the law of value the third is the law of productivity the fourth is the law of increase in matthew chapter 25 just write it for reference when we read from verse 14 down to 30 matthew 25 the parable of the talents the bible says that the kingdom of god is like a man who went to his servants and delivered goods to them and then the bible says he gave unto one five talents two and one please pay attention and that in giving them he left them and the one who had five talents increased it to ten the one who had two talents doubled it and increased it to four the one who had a single talent went and buried it and when the man would come back to demand accountability he said what did you do with what i gave you and for the one with five received the reward the one with two received the reward and then the one with only one he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought instead of um doing this and that and that let me go and bury it here is your one talent he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant it is not enough to have financial resources you must know how to build and to increase that is why many of us continue to receive the blessings of the Lord through your job through a business and yet we do not increase because we do not understand that increase is a law increase is not just something you do in business there is a law that brings increase second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10 blessed be the name of the Lord second Corinthians 9 and verse 10 let me teach you something powerful now this is how money works this is the principle that helps you 
to distribute your financial resources for growth and for multiplication please pay attention the principle that i'm about to share with you right now is what will help you distribute financial resources to ensure growth and multiplication here's what the bible says now he that ministered seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and what should he do he should multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness four very important words here number one bread number two seed number three multiply number four increase in one verse that god can minister seed to the sower please say after me seed then say bread one more time say seed don't be tired say bread that means for every when god blesses you with financial resources in every increase and every blessing that god gives you whether it comes as a salary whether it comes as profits from a business whether it comes as a one-off show of favor in it there is always seed and there is bread everybody say seed and say bread now watch this the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure you are not hungry tomorrow I repeat the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure tomorrow there will still be food if you sow your bread you wasted it if you eat your seed you are going to lose God is that benevolent that out of every money he sends your way there is bread for today and there is seed for tomorrow when they cried the nation of israel cried for hunger god did not send seeds what did he send bread because they needed to eat it immediately now here is what most people do and i want to observe this respectfully speaking most of our elderly ones people within the ages of say 80 down to say maybe 70 60 that generation focused so much on seed and they forgot bread that means they focused they were so futuristic about securing the destiny of children and children's children that they forgot today there are many people is until they die you see how much they are worth now the children discover that this man who died had properties that he bought around but while he was alive there were times in that house they did not have food to eat he did not know that out of all the monies that god brings there is bread and there is seed he carried both bread and seed and sowed it into the future and now people were hungry and he himself did not benefit from the blessing of the lord upon his life and then you value one or two plots of land or one or two hectares of land and you find out that he left a total of 100 million and yet that same house children could not go to good schools that same house nobody had the opportunity to advance that was a mistake now our generation of young people our mistake is that we do not understand seed what we understand is bread are you getting it now so let tomorrow go places we eat both bread and seed today and then you find out someone who is supposed to be blessed today becomes a pauper and a beggar tomorrow overnight because they were bread conscious and not seed conscious are you learning something tonight that there was a generation that focused on seed and ignored bread you would find people who never built a house by themselves yet they had their assets and everything was in millions nobody benefited from their money not the kingdom not them not their children until they died and then you have people who come to claim the inheritance who have no basis coming to that family because they were focused on the future it is only when you are alive that you can get to the future god is that benevolent to bring bread for today and seed for tomorrow but when you have a generation that also as a revenge mission 
I won't suffer. My father, he has done his own. He has gone. Me, I will enjoy my life now. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Remember, this is a deliverance service. Let me tell you this. If you think like that, you will be naked tomorrow. It is painful to taste of the wealth and the prosperity of, of this kingdom. And then tomorrow you go back and have a worse tomorrow than your yesterday. The path of the just should always be as a shining light. Are we together? So everything God gives you, when God gives you money for some of you from this month, when you collect salary or when you collect some profit, whatever it is, or just someone just decides to bless you, as you hold that money, I want you to remember the law of increase. Increase is not just something you do through business. It is a law that what you are holding in your hand, there is seed and there is bread. There is a part of it that is for tomorrow and there is a part of it that is for today. You must be honest enough to be fair on yourself with the bread that is for today. But you must also be disciplined enough to allow the one that should get into tomorrow to get tomorrow. Let me tell you this. If you were to meet your accountant and ask him, please, I need a total of every money that has entered my bank account from when I opened it. You will repent for one year. For the kind of wastage you will sit down and say i can't imagine that hundred million has passed through this account one billion has passed through this account but no house no car no education where did it go to i will tell you you ate both seed and bread is god speaking to us don't say apostle all that i earn is just fifty thousand what will it do every seed is small there is no seed that is a tree there is no seed that is as big as my hand. God gave you favor January this year. An uncle just blessed you and gave you one million. What did you do? You forgot God. You forgot your future. You forgot everything. And you just said, look, I've suffered. Let me just, let me, let me do justice to myself. Now, don't feel bad. I'm not condemning you. Can I tell you this? Please, you must obtain grace from God tonight to be disciplined enough to fight and reject the temptation. Anybody who advises you, whether as friends and an association, oh, it's my birthday, I have to spend it the way. Who said that? Why don't you take the time now and let your seed prepare a befitting birthday for you? Are we together? There are people you see, I'm, I don't mean to insult you, but there are people who all they have in their account, home and abroad, is 500,000. Yet you will see them in a hotel where billionaires are. The billionaires have assets that pay for their liabilities. So they can spend 100,000 in a moment. Somebody who owns an airline can be there having a business discussion. They can spend 1 million right there because there are people queuing up to return the money at the airport. They are not stupid people. And then you find someone in their midst who are we together God is speaking to us the house of God is a place of wisdom can I tell you this listen please look up have the courage to look at friends look at everybody to say look I like this idea but I may not have the budget for this for now I will note it and when I am ready they will look at you and are you saying that NMPC job you are working in? Don't fall our hand. Don't do this. Can I tell you, summon the courage to let them know you have mental prosperity. Mental prosperity. There are people who would have been house owners in this city if only they knew how to eat bread and sow seeds. Is that true? I don't mean to insult you and please forgive me if you think I do. But there are people who have spent 10 years, 20 years, 30 years in Abuja here. They don't have one land. As at the time, land was 500,000 in some places, 50,000. They watched it go from 1 million to 5 million to 10 million to 20 million. There are people today... As at the time they got their houses, the surrounding lands were less than maybe one million. They watched people come and today the only thing they have is a little, maybe, maybe half plot. And they had the money. 
how about people who can borrow 10 million or 20 million or 40 million to buy a jeep and be paying it with salary and then somebody now comes to hit that jeep and they tell you the shock absorber alone will buy you kekena pep <laughs> are you seeing the mistakes that we're making please take seriously what i'm saying we keep making very wrong decisions because we do not know that for everything god trusts you with in that ten thousand there is bread and there is seed if you don't respect the seed in the ten thousand one million will never come is someone learning for some of us by reason of this message you will go and open an account like i teach the students and refuse to collect the atm from the bank let that be the account where your seed apostle what do i do with it just make sure it is there first don't worry about what to do with it many of us have had the privilege do you know there are people in this nation who have had the honor and the privilege of meeting others who said look my house is valued at 30 million but i'm i'm relocating to america if you have five million take and they could not take an offer because all the seeds god said keep because of these days of favor you ignored it and you were eating it and now a house of 30 million that will be given to you five million but because you ate both bread and seed can i tell you this don't regret the mistakes you made yesterday start now make up your mind and discipline yourself to start now for everything god gives you every financial resource god gives you there is bread and there is seed are we together bread is for today seed is for tomorrow practice savings practice savings when god blesses you take out your tithe believe in tithing 10 percent and then take out your seed many people recommend 20 percent of whatever you have so that you save it i told the school of ministry students you can save 20 percent of your income if you have time what is pursuing you is what determines how you run is that true if a chicken is pursuing you you can run carelessly but if a lion is pursuing you you will run with the energy of an athlete so if you know you have made mistakes and now at at 40 at age 40 you are saving 20 percent of your income you will not go far when you are talking to a child of 13 14 years you can tell him to start saving 10 20 percent but i'm telling you if you really 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 want to make progress financially you must practice the law of increase and then learn to save save there are two basic reasons why we save number one for emergencies number two for investment write it down in another series we'll take our time to deal with it there are only two reasons why we save money number one for emergencies number two for investments by the way you may want to write this down the only way money multiplies is through investments there is no other way the only way money multiplies is through investments what is investment acquisition of assets that is for another series wealthy people never take on any liability and expenditure until they can show the assets that will pay for it they spend their lives acquiring the assets that pay for their liabilities so when you meet a wealthy man and you say daddy i want to celebrate birthday he will not just carry one million and give you he will check from all his investments which one will pay for that liability if there is no investment that pays for it he will be patient that is the economy of the wealthy the only way money grows ladies and gentlemen please hear me investments in another series we may not have time to teach that now but it is important for you to know that the law of increase is very important you need to experience increase not just the arrival of financial resources 
almost everybody here with decent planning no matter what level you can put something together while you are praying lord open doors of favor for me but then you are practicing your savings and you are putting something down god can now open a door for you and then you have abundant financial resources every time you spend everything you have know that your future is crying every time you spend everything you have you just punished your future practice frugality the absence of wastage justifiable expenditures be frugal especially where you are rising there are people who can afford to be you know uh, quite um, luxurious with their lives because they have paid the price to build systems that can replenish where you are starting and where you are rising you must be frugal can i be honest with you you know that you are really making progress financially when people underestimate your real worth because you reduce yourself many levels below your true worth so that you can grow people should not be able to look at you and estimate and say you are 10 million you are 1 billion you are 500 million you are 200 million you are 500,000 no you should leave many layers below your true worth as a sacrifice to truly get to the wealthy place that is the philosophy of wealthy people a man may make may be a millionaire and yet you still see him living a modest life being frugal the day you see him acting as if he's a millionaire he has become a billionaire since so if you join him just because you made one or two million i hope you know a millionaire is not who, one who has one million or two million no a millionaire is one who has relationships that can maintain that level intelligence that can maintain that level systems and structures that can replenish at that level and then financial resources that is at least 10 million if not you are not a millionaire so you see all this philosophy of 1 million or 1.5 and we say we are millionaires then we say we have made it and then we crash back to 100,000 again as a punishment for not learning we start again and we repeat the same mistake life is a brutal teacher it will teach you as many times as you need to learn painful teaching tonight but a profitable one are we learning the law of increase for the sake of this series the next time we're going to look at the law of relation and then we'll look at the law of investments and you'll be learning that investment is not just about money like prosperity there are five levels of investment spiritual investment mental investment investment in your body and financial investment and then we'll be learning how to store wealth it's one thing to have so much but you must know how to store it the bible says strong men retain wealth there are people who have risen to one billion billions and 10 years after they crash back to the point that they cannot bring 200,000 it's a terrible life that's not God's design for us it is the reason why in Africa we do not perpetuate wealth because it starts and ends with us you start from zero naira you rise to one billion by the end of your life you are minus one your children start they balance up that to zero and start again it's not supposed to be so the Bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children not his children you must be two generations ahead that's how you measure your success a quick recap number one the law of mental transformation number two the law of value are we still here number three the law of productivity number four the law of increase now we are wrapping up please pay attention this is a very sensitive moment now i'll have to end here for this series but i want to end by showing you that in this kingdom we have an advantage there is the prophetic dimension of wealth you may not learn this in a business seminar but it is true there is an advantage that we have in this kingdom we are not helpless there is the prophetic dimension of wealth we're about to pray 
this is very important in second chronicles chapter 20 when you read from verse 20 to 25 the story of jehoshaphat and judah when they were attacked by three nations that came in unity to fight them second chronicles chapter 20 we begin to read from verse 20 please let's hurry up for time the bible says and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of tekoa pay attention now and as they went forth jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah koinonia god is speaking and ye inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall ye prosper not just believe the business you are doing not just believe that your mind is transformed there is an advantage that i build in my economy for the saints in light are we together by the time you read down to 25 the people began to kill themselves and then all they came and they saw dead bodies there and the bible says jehoshaphat and the people they could not take the spoils away why will people carry gold to war because god wanted to use a prophetic dimension and give it to his people believers hear me the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness it's a system of advantage incorporated in god's economy to prove to creation that there is a god that backs the saints are we together hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 very quickly and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt egypt is a place of captivity and by a prophet was he preserved in second kings chapter 7 from verse 1 just write it down you don't have we are not we don't have the time to read it elisha said this was a famine in, in samaria i'm showing you how territories were restored through the prophetic hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria this is prophecy when there was famine the economists were still there when there was famine the business people were still there can i tell you there are times when your fishing will not bring fish it is not that your net is not good it is not that your skill is not good it is that there are powers that can stop the fish from coming there at that time you don't just need business acumen you need a prophetic advantage are we together in luke chapter 5 luke chapter 5 let's read that very quickly from verse 1 and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of god he stood by the lake of gennesaret uh-huh and he saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets what were they washing so they were valuable they had boats they had nets they were productive are we together now oh there are times they were responsible and transformed enough to go for fishing there are times that mental transformation can be limited there are times that your value can be limited there are times that your skill you are as productive as you can but because we live in a realm that is spiritual you will need jesus and he entered into one of the ships which was simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of them now when he had left speaking he said to simon i show you the prophetic dimension of wealth launch out into the deep I don't care what it is that you have done i know your economic principles say it is until december it says in in two months you cannot be blessed but this one i respect your net i respect your boat i respect your transformation but i am jesus launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought hallelujah here's what simon said master we have toiled all night we are not lazy we are valuable we are productive we've been doing this for a long time but the
pandemic just came and all our skills and the company the company is still in place but there is no profit he said nevertheless oh there is a nevertheless in a believer's equation are you hearing me in a believer's equation it is not one plus one that is two economically speaking one plus one is two but there are times demons can change that two into zero so you are doing one plus one but your answer is not becoming two and jesus says step out now this is not economy this is the prophetic if you don't understand this dimension your wisdom will be limited this is where the fallacy of people ignoring god comes in ignoring the prophetic ministry after 10 years of excelling they will plunge down sign satan and simon answering said master we have toiled all night we have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net what happened verse 6 when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break they had never caught this kind of miracle let me tell you what the prophetic can do i believe in investments where you can be patient for 10 20 years and god will lift you i believe you can buy build houses and then be paying the rent break even after three five years but believe us we are not alone in this journey there is the prophetic dimension that can push a man overnight i repeat it is not a license for laziness that is why I taught you these other laws before introducing this dimension. The mistake with we men of God in the body of Christ is that we ignore all of this. And we just tell people there is a prophetic dimension. And there is. So as they receive, they become lazy. They refuse to contend for transformation. They refuse to contend to be valuable. They refuse to be productive. They refuse to master relationships. They refuse to invest. Why? Because they know that at any time, I can come but hear me God did not bring you tonight just to learn economics this is the house of God mysteriously mysteriously this house sustains the power of God to change lives and to transform even people's finances by the power of the prophetic I am a product of these principles alongside the prophetic ministry when the prophetic ministry is administered out of disalignment to scripture it will destroy it will produce imbalances but when the prophetic ministry is administered within the boundary of scripture and then balanced by these principles it can work wonders in a man's life there is something called prepared blessings in this kingdom where joseph can be sitting down and god can make pharaoh joseph you can interpret dreams but your value cannot make pharaoh call you it takes an agency from heaven to make pharaoh want to see you i took my time to pray over the things that i'm about to declare let me wrap up tonight before we pray let me define for you what is the power to get wealth based on everything i've said what then is the power to get wealth never forget this definition two definitions i will give you number one the power to get wealth is an engracing by the holy spirit upon an individual upon an organization an engracing by the holy spirit upon an individual upon an organization that number one attracts to the life of that individual people opportunities and resources what we're, we're defining the power to get wealth and engracing from the holy spirit that can come upon the life of an individual and it works like a magnet attracting to your life people the ministry of men attracting to your life opportunities attracting to your life resources number two the power to get wealth is an empowerment upon an individual or an organization to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men 
to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men leading to all kinds of rewards principally financial rewards an empowerment upon an individual an empowerment upon a family an empowerment upon a business an empowerment upon an organization a ministry to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men comma leading to all kinds of results honor influence principally financial rewards this is the power to get wealth so when the bible says god gives men the power to get wealth he places a grace upon their lives that can attract to their space people resources and opportunities and then he engraces the people to provide extraordinary solutions that will lead to all kinds of results rewards even financial rewards i have an assignment as we wrap up this series is our first financial series officially in this ministry it won't be the last there are many other dimensions to cover by the grace of god i'm committed to communicating the whole counsel of god but hear me truly i tell you there is a prophetic dimension of wealth i have worked in keeping with the laws of transformation i have worked in keeping with the laws of value the laws of productivity and all the other laws but many instances in my life i've had the honor and the privilege to receive a prophetic push and i can tell you the wonder that this did in my life we're wrapping up this is a very sensitive moment please pay attention please pay attention in matthew chapter 10 and verse 41 you want the prophetic to work for you you have to know how the prophetic works it says he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward i don't have the time to begin to tell you different experiences in my life and in this ministry where god granted the grace to provoke the prophetic and when the prophetic came it took us to different levels of the blessings of the Lord can I tell you believers I know that many people have suffered manipulation from men of God imbalances from men of God but I love you too much and I fear God too much to not teach you the truth these truths you have learned the spiritual laws and part of this physical laws are irrefutable but the prophetic advantage comes into the life of a believer listen carefully to be able to lift you and to bless you there are two keys that provoke the operation of the prophetic please write it down and never forget the prophetic does not just work arbitrarily there are two keys that activates the operation of the prophetic number one honor honor to god and honor to the prophetic vessel that will speak over your life you cannot dishonor god and dishonor his mouthpiece and prosper by the anointing that comes from that mouthpiece now sometimes men of god use this sadly to bully people into you know just trying to manipulate people for respect that may be wrong but i'm telling you when you dishonor god and you dishonor his anointed you will never truly be able to receive number two the second way you provoke the prophetic to work for you is through the power of sacrifice psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you can't imagine how i've struggled to come and teach this prophetic dimension but because i cannot my mind i will not even be able to sleep knowing that i did not open you up to this dimension 
behind the mysterious prosperity you see of men and women whether in the kingdom or even in the secular accelerated wealth that just came into people there was a prophetic push and it came at the instance of honor and at the instance of a sacrifice i'm going to be speaking over your life i'm going to be declaring over you but let me tell you this for the first time in koinonia i'm going to be challenging you tonight to stand in partnership with the lord and agree with god what sacrifice that you are going to give with understanding to break out of any financial circle of limitation and retrogression years of of poverty and yokes of darkness listen if you don't believe what i'm teaching and what i'm saying please do not do it just listen to what i'm telling you you are absolutely at liberty to ignore what i'm telling you but if it is the kingdom and it is prosperity you desire whether you are following online or listening to me there are companies there are families there are individuals like peter you have tried all night the truth is that you have taken out time to transform yourself you have bought books you've gone to school you've had seminars there are others who have you are valuable others you are productive you've done your best but there are times when your net may not catch any fish there are times when your boat can take you to the river but the net will not catch any fish at that point you need the prophetic when the pandemic came people lost money people lost businesses hear me if i stand here as a man of god to lie to you to manipulate you may a curse be upon me forever for the rest of my life i fear god too much and god has shown us too much mercy to stand here and face you inside outside all the overflows and the thousands and potentially millions of people across the globe following i fear god too much to do that but also i love you too much to look beyond my reputation and teach you the truth there are times that i have taken certain steps of faith i cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that i've laid down at the altar that has made god to vow certain vows in my life it was in portacot in one of the occasions i went for a convention i was outside just like koinonia and the man of god came and preached i sat down didn't have much there was nothing and he challenged people just like this and i believed him I went back home that night God is my witness I gathered my whole bag and everything my rechargeable I zipped everything I prayed in tongues laying my hands on it for three hours non-stop by the next day I dragged that bag that was everything I had I stayed outside when people were dropping seeds and dropping whatever others were giving landed properties other people were giving whatever it is I just stood back there and the Holy Spirit now said I should wait when everybody had finished giving he said I can walk to the altar I dragged my bag and I knew this was Isaac I went and I dragged that bag like a madman people were looking at me there is a way you really want to get out of certain circles please help those under the anointing there there is a way please hear me I'm speaking to you by the Spirit some of you you're being here tonight is the prayer and fasting of mama for 10 years i did not go to school but oh god can you raise somebody from this family that in my lifetime let us taste of the blessing of the lord before i go to my grave god wants to give you an opportunity i'm not calling you out i'm not calling anybody out but can i tell you this i'm about to pray for you the truth is that the prophetic truly truly when it has to do with ending circles it will take a sacrifice when God wanted many sons, he took his own son as a sacrifice and buried him in the ground. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless return rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Can I tell you this? I'm not supposed to say it, but I will tell you. While I was preparing, the moment the Lord put it in my heart to teach on this prophetic dimension, God gave me an instruction myself on what to sow because i have to believe in this message too 
if I don't believe it I'm a hypocrite I don't leave off what people do and bring I leave off my own obedience when God told me what to sow I had to say wow and I did it immediately before coming and even at that I made sure that I packaged my own seed to come and that one is between me and God this one now is apostle preaching to everybody including me so don't think it's something that we're just talking I believe in what I'm doing can I tell you this for some of you you have been praying and saying Lord how long I am tired of this circle for others you need to go and contend for transformation others you need to work on your value others you need to work on productivity others you need to work on all the spiritual laws but in addition to that God is giving us an opportunity tonight to end circles when I drop that seed and I return back I remember the Holy Ghost spoke to me outside and said from this day you have entered wealth I didn't understand what that meant listen carefully God is my witness by the next day 6 10 in the morning someone calls me shaking under the anointing who is this are you so 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 and so I said yes he said send me your account number I just thought immediately these are all these scammers who just want he said no 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 I woke up this morning with an instruction that I should do a transfer to your account I said what is this I had a release in my spirit I took the risk I was surprised to see what the person sent I said what in the world is this God now connected me to somebody and the rest is history God began to lift and to show himself faithful somebody who loved me so much you will think that I, I don't know if I cough that man will buy me a pharmacy not a drug I started watching these things happen only a fool leaves what works I held on to that truth and I said this must work I remember one time in this ministry when we started the Lord gave an instruction to do to empty the entire account I stand by the God of heaven and I tell you the truth that's an economic risk there are times when under divine instruction both bread and seed can go you can cast your bread upon the waters and after many days he says you will find it in one week seven days what God did for this ministry this dear vision he has so honored till Jesus comes we will not recover from it I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables many of you are already practitioners of these truths some of you are practitioners of it but by manipulation some of you are doing it but it, it, there was no light and revelation can I tell you this I'm about to pray for you our time is up you are going to agree with God right now as a family as a business as an individual Lord I believe you and I believe your servant what seed it is I'm not there's no amount we are not mentioning anything I'm not calling anybody out everyone should participate your children whoever if it's a seed that you want to give here ushers I don't know how they, how you do it maybe the account details will be given if it's something you want to copy the account details and so but brothers and sisters I want to pray for you the prophetic to bring people out of seasons of 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 shame and reproach it is with sacrifice a sacrifice is not an offering no if a sacrifice does not touch you it will not touch God I want you to stand oh my lifting has come oh my lifting has come oh my rising has come oh my rise the Lord gave me an instruction many years ago 
to carry a seed which was a sacrifice and take to Canaan land and go and drop it before God's servant. It was a huge sacrifice. I got up like a madman, got the next available flight, went there, did everything I did. I came out with joy knowing that my life would change. And the Holy Spirit asked me to come out of the vehicle. He said I should lay my hands on the ground there in Canaan land. And he says, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. I can show you different points in my life. A day came in my life when the Lord spoke to me and said, I will begin to raise people who will be personal financiers to your life, not ministry. I will begin to raise kings and nobles from across the globe whose assignment is to make sure you are comfortable serving the purposes of God. I believed him. A sacrifice is powerful. A sacrifice can change an individual's life. Listen to me. I'm going to give you room to pray in one minute. You know, some of you are in debt right now into the millions and into the billions, corporate debt, personal debt. Some of you have lost money in investments. There is no way you can get it back. Some of you, there are all kinds of problems. You have court cases right now. This kind goeth not, but by sacrifice. I'm going to give you two minutes. Our time is gone. To cry before the God of heaven and to tell him, Lord, I have come to the end of this season of begging and borrowing and crying. Please take it serious. Please. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, no distraction everywhere overflows. Please pray. Some of you are crying, don't be ashamed of your tears. God is giving you an opportunity to change your life. Pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. Your life is about to change. Oh. My lifting has come. Oh, 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 my lifting has come. Oh, 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 my season has come. Oh. oh, oh my season i like you to declare lord what my father could not do what my mother could not do this embargo of poverty and hardship upon my life upon my ministry upon my family it's time to bring it to an end it's time to bring it to an end it's time to bring it to an end man of god pray you may be anointed, but you need to engage the principle that brings supply for your life and for ministry. Otherwise, you will suffer as if God did not call you. Businessman, listen to me. There are times your boat and your fish may not be able to catch. You will need the master's voice. But before the master's voice, you will need to give your boat as an act of faith. don't fight what god puts in your heart for some of you this may be the first time in your christian experience you will be making a real sacrifice prompted by a man of god for others that is the principle that kept lifting you to where you are in the name of jesus now please listen to me please hear me ushers i like you to just i don't know how you do it but position yourselves around just help them please my god i sense such a strong anointing here i'm about to break certain things now if there is a seed here and you have it your sacrifice whatever i check your writing we can have the account numbers pr projected please make sure no scammer or nobody defrauds you we are people of integrity whatever seed i want to pray for you 
when God spoke with joy I gave mine and I still made sure I said no I cannot come and be praying for God's people and then not hold a sacrifice to myself I believe in this thing that I teach with all my heart this is how he's brought us thus far there is no magic to it I want to pray for you there is a grace that will come upon you today please hear me many of you you will marvel and wonder at what God begins to do there is an anointing that will come upon businesses upon individuals I'm telling you this by the God who called me that at the instance of this sacrifice and those who are following from any nation the US Europe here in Nigeria there are pastors who are watching God is telling you to do this for your ministry there are business people who are watching God has been speaking to you for a long time now is the time I'm not asking anybody to come out if you're doing a transfer that is the account there Alas, kodi la kaushiata. Predene shele baruzia zeneka tuske alabada. If you have your seed, lift it. If it's a transfer, do it. If you're making a commitment, please don't be emotional and don't make emotional decisions. No. But I can tell you by God, this is an instruction that God gave me. Otherwise, I would not do this. Since Koinonia started in Abuja, this is the first time. That a call is being made by the Spirit of God. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Please keep standing. I'm going to pray. I'm going to bow my knees to the God of my covenant. Listen to me. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, please, I want you to believe. Don't waste your time. Please, no movement around. I want you to believe. I want to pray for you. The vision that brought me to ministry was a vision of a generation crying and said there's no food and there's no water and this I said who is the cause and they said you are the one I wanted to run and help them but I was afraid because there were people who were chasing me and a gray gray bearded man that I know now to be the Holy Spirit held my hand and he said let us go brothers and sisters I know what it means to be in insufficiency don't think this is just a preacher's talk at whatever level God has helped you there is more believe me when I tell you there is more it will look like arrogance to begin to tell you the faithfulness of God I just leave that as as let Jesus be glorified but I want to pray for you I want you to believe and shout a resounding amen whether you are standing or falling I want you to believe it with all your heart. Father, don't kneel. You can stand. I will do the kneeling. I kneel and I bow before you by this apostolic and prophetic grace. Skada Every force sitting on anyone's financial destiny right now in the name of Jesus by the power that raised Christ from the dead let that force be dislodged now be dislodged now be dislodged now
master we have toiled all night let me speak to someone here let let the seasons of toiling walking like an elephant eating like an ant let it come to end in your life now let it come to end in your life now hear me everyone here who is in debt whether personal debt or business debt i prophesy by the god of heaven between now and the next three months by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic come out of that debt now come out of that debt now every business here that has refused to grow has refused to rise hear ye the word of the lord between now and the end of 2021 be 10 times better than you are hear me there are many of us here it's not like you are lacking food to eat but you keep recycling the same financial level recycling you can't break out of it some of you have been on building projects for close to 10 years to finish it and move your family is not there by the power of the prophetic i push you to the next level of your destiny i push you to the next level of your finances hear me i tell you fire is falling there are families here that love the lord with all their hearts but nobody has risen financially in that family for whatever reason if you belong to that family right now i'm speaking to you because the power of god is coming upon you i decree and declare anyone here who is part of any family where the circle is just poverty lack and hardship i declare may that cause be broken now may that cause be broken now every ministry here that is struggling financially following online you are a man of god your church your ministry is struggling financially up today and down tomorrow in the name of jesus christ come out of that shame and reproach now i want to pray for you the lord is ministering to me that there are people it's not like you are poor but all your resources are hanging everywhere you keep watching resources that are supposed to have come but it does not come wherever it is in the name of jesus i decree and declare i command those resources to come to you now come to you now come to you now hear me there are some of you you were part of the lifting of many people but they forgot you that is the reason why you are where you are it's not that you are lazy you've been part of many people's rising but now they've left you where you are in the name of jesus i pray the destiny helper assigned to wipe your tears hold your hands and lift you wherever they are this week i command them to appear before your destiny appear before your destiny all those trusting God for jobs trusting God to start businesses trusting God for any value adding structure in the name of Jesus I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead 
beginning from this week let there be testimonies and anyone sitting on your glory your financial glory i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn until you sit on your rightful place hear me there are many of you as you go to sleep tonight god will open up to you visions and he will tell you what to do believe me as you go to bed god will show you what to do hear me there are some of you here because of the urgency of the situation in your life a fish does not carry coin but when there is need to pay tax god can make even a fish to bring coin i pray for you from the most unexpected means may the resources to take away shame from your life may it appear in the name of jesus now hear me i speak over every sacrifice many of you are making profound sacrifices only god knows what you are doing individuals businesses ministries couple children young old organizations but i pray for you by the power that raised christ from the dead the same way fire came upon the sacrifice of elijah in the name of jesus may fire rest on your sacrifice hear me for some of you what you sowed is for the next level of your promotion and i really mean what i'm saying for some of you what you sowed is for the next level of your political destiny some of you what you sowed is for the next level of your destiny whatever has died in your hand hear the word of the lord let it come back to life now hear me if you have never experienced an individual calling you to say i want to help you i release that mantle on you now i release that mantle on you now i release that mantle on you now I release that mantle on you now. Inside, outside, online. Receive that grace right now. Please hear me. Hear me. I am not praying for you. For someone to just come and help you once. I'm praying for someone who will build a system around your life. hallelujah please hear me if there is anyone who has victimized you financially either based on tribal sentiments based on religion based on political affiliation or whatever it is right now i lose those chains of you go forward 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 I want you to watch the marvelous testimonies of strange financial miracles you are going to be hearing in the name of Jesus Christ can I be honest with you for some of you you will be sitting in your home someone will bring the key to a house and say take I speak this by the unction of heaven for some of you will be sitting and someone will bring a car and say God instructed me to give you hear me for some of you someone will come and meet you and say god said i should raise your children till university <laughs> now hear this the final prayer there is an anointing that comes upon a man that can attract opportunities that can attract people that can attract resources i taught you last week 
if you want to pick nails from the ground here yeah, you don't pick them one by one you pass a magnet around them and it will pick everything some of you that's what you are about to become right now yeah. hear me some of you your helpers are already in koinonia they are in this place right now yeah. now therefore as i have received from the fathers of faith this is a relay this grace was passed it is not something we invented as i have really as i have received from the fathers and by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic this grace that mysteriously attracts resources attracts men attracts opportunity in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god koinonia take that grace now let that grace come on your head now let that grace come on your business now take that grace now take that mantle now be blessed be blessed be blessed and hear me any power that fights your prosperity from today in the name of jesus that power goes down before your face and any man who says over his dead body for this prophetic word to come to pass may the ground open and swallow them may the ground open and swallow them every yoke every enchantment every activity of witchcraft negative patterns i break it now in the name of jesus christ go and return with testimonies in the name of jesus give jesus praise give jesus praise it's a new season hallelujah now please be patient i know our time is up you have your offering here or you have your your sacrifice please let me have one um usher so that i can drop this if you are to drop let's minimize movement you can drop it with the ushers if it's an, a transfer you are making i want to simply make the altar call and we're done so we'll do this very quickly hallelujah i assure you that your life will never be the same there are people here even though we're teaching on a financial series remember we said the first level of prosperity please minimize movement let's honor the altar call the first level of prosperity is your spiritual prosperity whilst you heard me teach the lord began to speak to you that you have not made your relationship right with jesus or you are saying apostle truly i love jesus but my obsession for money and all of these things have distracted me and i'm not serious spiritually but i want to make it right right now whether you are in this auditorium or in the overflow do not leave this place without giving jesus a chance to your life i'm going to count one to five i want you to run and come and stand here everyone up the balcony around don't wait for anyone to come to be the first you'll be the first come and stand before jesus this is an opportunity celebrate them they are coming i will count one to five and afterwards we are going to pray one quickly koinonia celebrate them please ushers clear the way for them if they are coming for the altar call come to jesus god bless you come 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 to Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you. Are you coming? Run to Jesus. Three. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Thank you for coming, every one of you. You came to church to encounter Jesus. You're coming. Please run. Please run. I'm about to lead them to pray. Run quickly so that you catch up. God bless you. 
God bless you. God bless you. Now, all of you, please lift your right hand high above your head. Jesus is the one you are speaking to. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I obtain forgiveness of my sin. I obtain the gift of eternal life from you. I decree and I declare that Jesus is my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. You have brought them to yourself. I pray that the grace to keep them, let that grace be released upon you. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that a new life is yours in Christ Jesus. The grace to walk in victory is yours too in Jesus' name. I commend you to the ministry of the word and I commend you to the ministry of the spirit. May you be established and grounded in righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I want you to please move to my right, which is your left. There's a gentleman waving the placard. Please follow them very quickly. Let's celebrate them as they go. The counselors will meet with you for a few minutes and then you will be back. Please help mama. Someone help our mother. Praise the name of the Lord. Just to, be, to remind you that you can get this teaching and the one for last week on our YouTube page. By the way, please make sure you follow all our social media platforms. Koinonia Global, there's Koinonia Abuja and every other arm of expression. Please do well to connect but you can get the teachings on Koinonia Global this night and then tomorrow. Take out time to listen to it. Listen to it with your family members and make sure that it blesses you and then do not forget that next week is our miracle service for the month of October. Please rise up on your feet. I decree and declare that your week beginning is blessed. This will be a week full of testimonies for you. You will see the mighty hand of God at work in your life in the name of Jesus. By next week, many of you will return with tears some testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. And now together, let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let it rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you next week. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain